else want? And then um, I'm getting more of a show back. So this is Shoulder, neck. The getting old stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, this never happened when I was in high school. <laughs> Slept on something wrong and hurt myself. Is it just me or is it hot in here? Oh, yeah, you can feel it. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, it does feel warm. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Probably just because it's more people than we're. Yeah, maybe. Probably than we're allowed to have. More people. Was there a copy of the August minute? Am I missing them? Do I have them in my pile and I just buried them? They should be in this one. They're not, yeah, right here. Oh, okay, hold on. I buried them then.
that's really just I'm not broadcasting as a speaker. So. I like it a lot. Yeah, they turned out really good. Yeah. yeah. And we went over it and over it and over it. We still missed a couple of them. Yeah. We're going to redo it. Yeah. It's very yeah. 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 I asked her to take that one out because I really wasn't here. Yeah. There's a couple that she tried, but you know, everybody was shooting things at her. I think it shows that it's a great. Um, I'm putting in the new packet and then they'll be in. Folks are saying that the rooms at capacity, yeah. okay, so they're just going to hang out there. Yeah. Maybe I'd like to do it. Yeah. I'll step out. We used a grant that paid for it. Could it be like added in like two guys' weekend somehow? I have stuff like that. Yeah, I have to kind of use it. Yeah. Where they can put a piece of tape on All set? Okay. All right, I've got four o'clock, so I'll call the uh, Monday, September 14th, 2020 Town Council meeting to order. And the first, first order of business is the invocation and the pledge. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day today, and thank you for the wonderful weather that we've had. Father, we pray for our country, especially those out west as they're dealing with the fires, and we pray for people down in Louisiana as they're getting ready to deal with another hurricane. Father, we pray for a very productive and hopefully wonderful meeting this evening, and all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Terry, you want to lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And um, we had a nice crowd with us today. We'll get to that, uh, that particular item in a few minutes, but we want to go ahead and get some things cleaned up first before we get into that. And we do have two items we're adding to the agenda. Appoint a, uh, an attorney to our ethics commission and extend the emergency barricade uh, rental for outdoor seating. So with that, we'll start with the agenda and we should have uh, copies of the minutes from August 10th and July 24th, 2020. Anybody have any comments, questions, corrections? All right, I move to approve the July 24th and August 10th, 2020 minutes as presented. I'll second. I have one on the this is the twenty fourth meeting was the paddle boat meeting. Correct. That's I, that's the one I called in on. Okay. Not the last. Right. Okay. Mixed up. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Thank you very much. Rebecca Treasurer's report, please. Okay, we'll start with the current fiscal year. So during the month of August, I did transfer $500,000 back to the local government investment pool. If you remember in July, I had $300,000 going the opposite direction. So between preliminary tax payments and utility payments, I was able to replenish that fund and a little bit more. We are 17% through the budget year. The only thing I'll mention in detail is the property tax levy was recorded in August, and you could see that we did meet the budget. We have approximately 1,600 taxable accounts in town. 13 continue to be exempt from town tax in the amount of 33,800. I have 48 immaterial accounts that I do not send bills for, for a total of $105. So moving on to what is a draft FY20 income statement. 
We did receive the final FY20 income tax distribution, and we did exceed the budget by a significant amount. A few comments here. Of the $130,000 remittance, $75,000 was from tax year 19 reconciling items, which means it took that much time for people to file their return and for the state to do the auditing necessary to determine from tax year 19 what still was owed to Leonard Town. The remainder of that distribution is considered the second quarter of tax year 20 and represents a 7.5% decrease over second quarter tax year 19. So that may be an indication of, of a trend that we may see going forward. The next quarterly distribution will be 1120. And that normally is just a random estimate that the state makes. It's not until we get into June, July, and August of every year that we really finally see what the true numbers are. For income tax, what we have budgeted for FY21 is virtually the same as what the actual was for FY20. So on one hand, what we have is now knowing that our tax year 20 second quarter is 7.5% lower, we may have a situation where we might not meet budget. But because we did not overestimate income tax based on 19 and 20 receipts, we are in a better position to absorb any of that. And just as a note that as you look through this budget draft, we did not spend 100% of the highway user revenue that we received just because of a timing issue. So that flows down to the financial statement after the audit as a restricted fund balance. And that's it. And that's restricted because that's, we have to spend it on road maintenance. Road maintenance. Right. Any comments, questions for Rebecca? I have a question. So with the governor's um, order to not turn off and not people not assume fees and things for not paying their water bills, no turn off, did that affect people not paying their water and sewer bills? Did, did that affect us? It has. Um, that order expired on September 1st. Right. And so in the normal course of a quarter, September 1st would have been the time we sent um, reminder notices and shutoff notices. The language has been modified for every quarter so that we never threatened any shutoff because we weren't allowed to. This most recent reminder notice that was mailed last week indicated that the governor's order expired, that we're going to return to the procedure of late fees and interest charges. Um, the normal quarterly shutoff wouldn't be until December. So what that letter requested of customers who had past due balances all the way back from March of 2020, which actually covered October, November, and December service, so we're almost a year into the service, being in arrears, is that they needed to communicate as soon as possible with the office here and start making payment arrangements, which we intend to put in writing and start putting customers on a payment plan going forward. Obviously, if we have customers that don't communicate with us, we'll have to reevaluate and determine who would be subject to shutoff right. uh, at the end of December. But that's the, the process going forward. Okay. Um, the Public Service Commission, which we are not regulated by, gave specific directions to utilities about when they were uh, allowing shutoffs in the state of Maryland. Um, and actually, our schedule would be in compliance with their schedule. Um, it's, it's more lenient than their schedule. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. But eventually, we will get paid for you know, what, what is due to the, the town. I'm not sure if we will, because we have tenant <coughs> issues. And if tenants move, and then landlords may be forced to 
pay for the tenants. I'm just say, not but sure we've got the tenant landlord agreements in place too. So. Technically, it's a, yeah. a lien on the property. Right. Okay. Any other questions for Rebecca? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Planning and zoning. Jada? <clears throat> Sorry, I don't want to crowd the room. I'm going to come in soon. I have to stay and then leave. <laughs> uh, so planning and zoning met last on July 20th. They actually had a hefty agenda. They heard the MedStar St. Mary's County uh, generator project. Uh, that was uh, approved. Um, then they heard the St. Mary's County Government Community Correction Center facility. That was also approved. Then they heard the ordinance for Chapter 128 streets and sidewalks for small cell wireless facilities. They recommended um, uh, favorable to you guys, and you passed it. Uh, ordinance 199, Chapter 155, zoning for small wireless facilities. They gave you a favorable recommendation. You approved it. Same thing with Ordinance 200, the amendment to the Comprehensive Land Use Plan, 201, the Comprehensive Plan for the Zoning Map Amendment, 202, Chapter 155, Zoning for Assisted Living, and Ordinance Number 203, Chapter 155 for Open Space and Multifamily Residential Units in the PUD District. Uh, those were all recommended to you favorably, and you approved all of them. Thank you very much. Um, we have one item on the agenda for the Monday, September the 21st meeting, and that's going to be Meadows at Town Run Phase 2. All they're asking for is approval of the plats that have already been approved. Do you have any questions? Beautiful. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay. That's plain and zoning. Everyone should receive a copy of the police report. Any questions on that? Is Christy's in the other room if we have any questions. I did notice one thing uh, that we've got concerns about speeding, and I, I can't find her report right now, but I know she, uh, how many stops did they, uh, did they have for speeding? Um, she's here now. 43 vehicles were stopped. Yeah. 43 Speed vehicle accident. stops for, for speeding. Yep, thank you, appreciate you all. Being out there. Any other questions for Christy or comments? Okay. Thank you, Christy. Okay. We'll move to town administrator's report, and let's go down to the uh, ethics commission. Start with that one. Okay. I'm just um, on the uh, public hearings that we had scheduled at 4:15 and 4:30. Right. We did. Uh, send notices out and uh, advertise that those were postponed. Um, the state um, had an issue with the property being contiguous to the town. There was a really thin strip of land at that state highway right of way uh, between Riken and this property. So we're going to need to bring that little strip of land in as well. It shouldn't be an issue, but it's just delaying things a little bit. So um, that's why those were um, delayed. Um, the next item, appoint Kathleen Werner as the Ethics Commission Attorney. Uh, Phil Dorsey had previously been the Ethics Commission Attorney for the town, and uh, he stepped down. Um, Katie is very familiar with, with the process, and she has agreed to uh, fill in for that. So we um, recommend appointing her as the attorney. Katie is with the law firm, correct? Isn't yes. she? Okay. Yeah. The, the reason Phil stepped down is he and his wife actually purchased some land in town. He just felt that would be a conflict of interest. And, you know, our, our regular town attorney, Patrick, um, he could, he's over on the eastern shore, so it would be a lot more expensive. So uh, we've always kept a local attorney handling the ethics commission and kind of kept it separated as well. I was going to well. say, we always like to have someone local also. Yeah, I don't have an issue. Um, I move to appoint Kathleen Warner as the attorney for the Ethics Commission, replacing Phil Dorsey. I'll second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. The next item was just the um, to extend the emergency barricade <coughs> rental for the outdoor seating uh, in 
July, we approved two months' worth of uh, rental of the barricades after AB&H had um, donated two months' worth of the barricades for the outdoor seating for restaurants. Um, it ended up, we had um, reserved 2100 a month coming out of the beach party expenses um, since that was canceled. It ended up only costing us 1500 a month because of um, we actually were able to send some back, 10 of them back. Um, so um, we're just asking to finish out the, the outdoor season and go ahead and cover that. Um, we can cover it out of community development. Um, it would just be, uh, there's 1200 left from the beach party funding that we didn't use and um, we just need to add, would add $300 from community development. That shouldn't be a problem. And that would finish us until October? Yeah, until October 24th. So that's probably going to be about as long as the weather's going to be uh it's getting chilly yeah. sitting outside the one yeah. night. Yeah. So we would just need a motion on that to extend that for one more month. Do we have any liability issues with us providing the barriers just in case somebody runs through it? No, I mean I mean, that, I mean that's that would be covered, covered by, by the if we if we were sued we, we we would be covered under our policies. I was just going to say the outdoor seating has been very popular. Very. Um, I know I, I myself enjoy it. We go out. It's, it's very nice. So it's been very beneficial the to all the local businesses. Very yep. appreciative. Yep. All right. I move to approve funding the rental of the outdoor seating barricades for one month funded by the community development budget. Also. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. This is the last thing is just kind of an update on some grant uh, activity. We've been really busy. Um, of course, we have the paddle wheel <coughs> grant for $100,000. Um, we received an emergency grant from the Maryland State Arts Council for th additional $3,000 for virtual programming. So we'll be able to continue that. Uh, we also, as you know, received $175,000 for phase two of the boat slips. Um, we have recently received um, St. Mary's County Arts Council grants um, for a beach party and the concerts, which are, they allowed us to go ahead and use, even though we didn't have the events for virtual programming and for the music festival that's going to be this weekend. Um, we, uh, were, we received a 5000 or I'm sorry, we submitted a uh, $5,000 grant for the Maryland uh, State Arts Council for planning for the alleyway art for L-Town Alley. And then later we can, uh, uh, once we have a plan in place, we can apply for another 20000 in uh, implementation for the artwork portion. And I've been uh, working with um, the owners in the alleyway network and coming up with a plan and getting prices. We submitted a community parks and playground um, grant for 225000 uh, this last month for part of those alleyway improvements. And the other portion, uh, there's about 125000 left that we will be submitting a community legacy grant for. Each grant has requirements of what can be funded and what can't, so we broke them out according to what would be allowed in each grant. So then we'll, um, depending on what we get, um, then we can circle back and see, you know, prioritize. And um, the council also had budgeted some money to go toward that as well. And some of it is um, streets and roads, and we had um, put that as well. And the last thing is the uh, facade improvement grant. We're wrapping up the first one, which was $50,000. We have a, a couple more businesses to finish that up. It got delayed with COVID. Um, we received $25,000 this last round of community legacy money. I just last week finalized the applications and uh, the program. We just kept it the same, $5,000 with a mat, $5,000 match is, is the maximum. Um, I reached back out to the committee and uh, everyone so far has agreed uh, to stay on the committee. So we'll be uh, working on that um, and then um, I guess the conversation we would need to have is if we want to try to continue it year after year. Um, it has been very popular. I know there's a couple projects that are waiting in the wings to, and plus with people seeing what was able to be done, I think, um, you know, I would like to continue doing it. And just for clarification, these grants are actually coming from the state. It's not the town money that's going into these projects. So. 
that's all I had. Okay. So that brings us to item C, the purchase of Black, Black Eyed Susan, paddle boat discussion and decision. You want to give us some background there? Okay. So at the uh, <coughs> July 24th meeting, the council um, appro approved us moving forward with the purchase and sale agreement to do our due diligence to, to look at purchasing the boat. Um, we formed a committee. Um, Doug Islip is here today. He's going to do a PowerPoint presentation of uh, the findings from the committee. I forwarded you uh, probably over 100 um, letters of support and against. Um, and uh, up until 3.30 today, we were still receiving them. All you have copies of everything at this point. Um, we have until tomorrow the contract expires. Um, so um, we did receive the $100,000 Maryland Heritage Areas uh, grant to go toward the purchase. I'm going to let Doug go through the PowerPoint and then um, we can answer questions from there. How do we get the brief up there? Oh, okay. Will's going to give it to me. Okay. <coughs> Good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. It's a pleasure to be able to come and talk to you on behalf of the, the fact planning committee. It's been an interesting month uh, and uh, an interesting project. Um, so we'll get right into it. Um, and that concludes the brief. Okay. Hey. Okay, so I'm telling you next slide. <clears throat> um, so a little bit of the, of the chronology of the project. Um, in, in October of last year, um, the town was notified about the availability of the riverboat, the Black Eyed Susan. Uh, in the April of this year, applied for the Heritage Grant and received $100,000, which is the maximum amount uh, allowable by the grant. So it was a, a, a real nice uh, vote of advocacy for the potential of the project. Uh, on the 24th, as Michelle mentioned, um, you all had an initial town council meeting where you authorized um, the funds to do the survey for the boat and also authorized standing up the fact-finding committee um, that we're reporting out on today. Uh, August, just last month, the boat survey was initiated uh, and it consisted of a couple parts. First, the, the stem to stern inspection. Uh, it consisted of a, an actual sea trial. And then uh, on the 14th of September, they went underwater and, and uh, checked out the hull and, and the bottom of the boat. Next one. Okay, a little bit about the boat. Um, those are pictures of the actual boat. Uh, it can hold 149 passengers, uh, built in 1986. Uh, and then in 2003, it went in for a, a refurb and actually uh, had a plug put in and, and expanded uh, by 30 feet from 87 feet to 111 feet. Um, it's capable uh, and, and would be used both for dockside events and for uh, cruise type events uh, from the wharf if, if, uh, if used. And of significant importance for, for the water here, um, the boat only draws four feet, so, so it, is, uh, it would work. Uh, in the new, uh, the new section of the pier. Okay, okay the, the inside of the boat um, the, has two decks. The, the picture on the lower left is the main deck. Um, it's a Victorian style. Uh, can be either set up as a, as a dining facility or, or a dance hall. Uh, it has a bar on the upper right is the, is the permanent uh, kind of fancy bar that's in the main deck. Uh, climate controlled, uh, handicap accessible, um, and and two bathrooms uh, in the, on the main deck. So it's a nice it's a nice looking restaurant. Also, would be a, a pretty cool looking dance hall. Um, the lower middle picture is is the upper deck, and this is where passengers would take advantage of of actually cruising and being out on the water. Um, those windows on either side uh, can fold up or down, plexiglass, so it can be open air. Uh, or it can, they can be up if the weather uh, needs it to be protected. And then on the right side in the middle is a picture of the kitchen. It's got a, a, a pretty capable kitchen uh, with commercial uh, stove, uh, refrigerator, 
uh, and uh, and sinks. So so able to not just bring food in, but actually do some food preparation uh, on the boat. Okay. So the boat survey that was conducted uh, in August, um, they did a, a real thorough look, stem to stern, looking for everything from cosmetic uh, issues to, to structural issues. Um, and they did a sea trial. The, the boat is actually powered by those paddle wheels. So uh, no, no screws or anything underneath it. That's, that's uh, how, uh, what it used for propulsion. And, uh, and they, they took it out and, and took it for a spin. Um, the dockside results um, overall looks uh, like it's sound structurally uh, and mechanically. Uh, there is some work that would need to be done and, and in fact you'll see in the budget numbers that we put forward um, uh, there's work that, that could be done initially, there's work that could be done over a few years. Um, what our recommendation is is, is do uh, a preponderance of the work first thing early on so that the first time anybody comes on that boat um, they're wowed by it. They say this is a you know this is a beautiful uh, boat and it's something that I'd want to come back to again. Um, so that's that's uh, we put dollars in the budget to do that. Um, the dive and the bottom inspection was done uh, earlier this month and uh, and the, with good results. Uh, the, the coating looked good and the metal thickness was good. Okay, types of events uh, that could be done on Breton Bay. Um, First of all, probably one of the first things would be done is look at renaming the boat to something that, that uh, kind of um, reflects uh, our town and our history and, and our bay. Um, the, the lower um, part of that, uh, of the top there, intent is affordable community service is important. The intent of this boat would not be um, only high-end customers could afford to go on it and, and it's a, you know, a, uh, a fancy schmancy kind of venue. The intent would be uh, a really interesting and enjoyable venue that's available to, to all citizens um, of Leonard Town and, and the local area. So the kind of cruises that we would do or the kind of events that we would do, um, the map that you see on the lower right is, uh, is a picture of cruises um, that the boat could do uh, within a reasonable time frame. The first, the first thing would be daily public cruises. So these are these are cruises uh, where the public would come up uh, to a ticket uh, ticket uh, taker, pay money, and go on immediately for a, a cruise. Could be anywhere from an hour to two hours, probably. If it was a two-hour cruise, it could go all the way to the uh, to the mouth of Breton Bay and back again. Um, we envision that there'd be special rates for families, for uh, for seniors, for children. Uh, for potentially for veterans, for first responders, whatever, whatever uh, the people uh, the town wanted to do, um, they could accommodate as far as fares. Um, notionally, for our, our, our thinking on how it would be operated initially, we figured four cruises per week, um, and that's uh, probably one on Friday, a couple on Saturday, and then one on Sunday. Um, that, that's a lot less. We, we um, talked with, uh, at length, in fact, the couple of committee members were involved with a very similar boat up in uh, Harrisburg, the pride of Susquehanna. Uh, and they actually do uh, four or three cruises a day, so, so much, a much uh, more aggressive schedule. Um, but we figured we'd start out, start out slow if, if we go forward with this. Um, during this cruise, it would not only be you know, going up the bay on this, on this vintage boat and, and seeing the sights, but there'd be a narration involved where, where uh, it could be educational, it could be talking about the environment, it could be talking about wildlife, uh, it could be talking about the history of the area. Um, uh, so uh, really the sky's the limit, but there would be, it would be talking going on for people as well as the sites. Um, the second kind of events are the evening events. And these ones more likely would be uh, signed up, uh, people would sign up online ahead of time uh, to book their, their selves, and, and there's all sorts of different themes that could be, uh, um, could be used for these, these evening cruises. It could be in conjunction with restaurants here in town, so it could be a pizza night or, or a wings night. Uh, it could be uh, something with the winery or, or breweries, uh, a, a beer tasting event. Um, it could be uh, music. Um, you know, the, the, uh, we had uh, at an earlier meeting, we had a guy suggest barbershop quartets, jazz quartets. Uh, you know, our local artists, um, I think, would be, would be very popular cruises. Um, 
there could be educational cruises. So, so uh, we bring on special uh, experts in, in whatever subject, whether it's history or whether it's environment uh, or whether it's, uh, um, well, could be anything, um, but, but that kind of a theme to it. And then corporate or private charters, um, it will show in a little bit that we went out and, and talked with a lot of, of the businesses, uh, both local businesses and, and defense contractors, and, and we think uh, the, the feedback we got was this would be a very popular um, venue for, for uh, corporations, for companies to rent the boat and, and take employees out on employee appreciation events or, or holiday events. Um, uh, I think that that would happen, uh, that would get booked up and people would have to be booking far in advance for that. Uh, fireworks, we know up in Harrisburg, that's the single most popular cruise of the year. Um, you know, I, I know that, that July 3rd or whichever night they're doing the fireworks here on Breton Bay, um, what a great place that would be to watch it from. Uh, and then uh, adult and kid-friendly themes, um, you know, 60s, 60s cruise or 70s cruise or a dinosaur cruise or a princess cruise, uh, could be anything. Uh, really, really, it's only limited by the imagination of the people who are on the boat and the input they're getting. And then finally, weddings. Um, this would be a, a, a a really unique uh, and interesting wedding venue. Um, it it uh, notionally could hold 60 or 70 guests and, and conduct uh, everything on the wedding from the rehearsal to the, to the wedding, to the dinner and the reception. Um, or it could be a larger crowd than that and do it uh, both land-based and, and uh, boat-based. Um, but, but again, we, we, uh, in, the, in the figuring that we did for revenue, we were very conservative, but but in my mind, I think weddings are going to be booked up far in advance once the word gets out on, on uh, uh, this capability. Okay. Partnerships and sponsors. Um, first is, is friends, membership groups. And this could be private citizens. Uh, it could be um, families. It could be corporations. Uh, and people would, would pay some, uh, some amount. Uh, and in, in return, they would, they would be uh, uh, a friend of the boat, and they'd also get reduced rates, uh, and and uh, maybe some other some other appreci appreciation. Um, corporate sponsors. Um, we think that uh, this is another, another thing that up in Harrisburg, um, they get a lot of sponsorships from corporations. Um, and the, as we went out to to businesses, uh, we weren't asking for sponsorships, but but we got back volunteer voluntarily people would be interested in, in sponsoring, being a sponsor of the boat. Why would they? For one, they would be advertising. Uh, you know, maybe we'd have a plaque up, uh, some kind of blast, brass plaque uh, up there on the boat. Uh, they, would, they would probably get a reduced rate on a, a cruise for their company. Um, and, and again, without, without even uh, soliciting sponsorships, um, uh, we've already gotten a pretty significant, we got $45,000. When we talked last, it was $35,000. It's now $45,000. Uh, without even asking for any. So, so we think that that would work out pretty well. Um, the hotel, the, the uh, partnership with the hotel would be, would be huge, I think, and would be beneficial both for the, the boat operations and for the hotel. And then grants, the town has been very successful in getting grants and, and uh, probably would succeed, uh, continue to succeed in uh, different ways of getting grants associated with the boat. And I'm not going to go through this list, but this is just in brainstorming uh, a list of potential partners that, that we see uh, that would be interested in, in some kind of uh, working with the boat, uh, uh, providing services or, uh, or receiving services. You might mention the uh, public schools interest. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the committee members went out to the Board of Education and got an enthusiastic response from them. Uh, and you can imagine both, both the public schools, the Lundenberg School, and the Forest uh, Tech Center mm -hmm. uh, all, all said that they'd be very interested in, in using the, the boat for education, for field trips, uh, and for internships uh, with the Lundenberg School or the, or the Tech Center. Um, it could be service-related internships, or it could be actually working on, in a marine environment uh, kind of internships. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the work that we did to figure out how the boat would be used, um, what kind of revenue it would bring in, and what kind of costs uh, would be associated that would get us that'll get us to the bottom line. 
So the first thing is the staffing. Um, this is once fully operational. So this notionally is by year two. Um, the boat will be up and running. It will be bringing in revenue uh, at a rate where we could fully staff it. Um, from the start, though, we would need a director. And this would be the person. This would be a really important position. Um, this person uh, is responsible for overseeing the marketing uh, as well as so the future operations as well as the current operations. They are responsible to make sure the events go off great and, and people want to come back. Um, the admin person would probably be a year or two kind of thing. That, that's one of the things that uh, as a cost saving measure in the first year while we're getting up and running uh, probably wouldn't be manned. Um, when passengers are aboard, even, uh, even when it's docked, um, the Coast Guard requires a certified captain and two crew members. Um, so those, those are, are planned in, uh, in addition to the crew members. Um, the crew members would have two, two purposes, the primary being manning the boat and, and uh, doing what's required, but they could also uh, be providing some of the service. There would probably be additional servers uh, on, depending on what the event was. Um, the part-time positions, the, the marketer would be really important. Uh, if to the continued growth and success of this boat, and then accountant and interns that I mentioned. And then depending on the event, bartenders, kitchen staff, uh, maintenance folks, uh, handyman, and off-season crew. Okay. So outreach response. Um, we went out uh, a couple different ways uh, talking to people who might be interested. The first was to the local businesses. Um, we had uh, a phone call with, uh, with the local business, Leonardtown Business Association last week uh, and actually went through this brief, told them all about it, uh, and, and had a lot of interest. Um, uh, uh, several of the restaurants and, and venues um, uh, piped up in the meeting and said, yep, they would use the, this boat uh, and they could see uh, a lot of mutual benefit. Um, local defense contractors. Um, so we sent out 56 emails uh, to, to a lot of the companies that are servicing Pax River because um, those likely would be uh, customers of the boat. Uh, they, would, they would be uh, those corporate cruises. So we sent uh, 56 emails, got 34 responses. Of the 34, 26 were favorable. Um, typical other comments, um, Avian Jeff Sherman uh, is here. Uh, his company said that they've been they've been crying for a venue like this. It's it's really hard to find something uh, unique and enjoyable for the employees, um, and we got a lot of responses like that. So so we just we think that uh, a lot of those companies would would be using this boat, would be booking it for cruises. Um, so out of the 34, 26 favorable, six were neutral, and those were all either company was too big or company was too small to really be able to to get their employees on board. And then two didn't think it was a good idea. Um, Facebook pages, we had uh, both the, the Leonardtown page and we stood up a riverboat page and, uh, and reached a lot of people. Um, so over 16,000 people were reached, um, 347 likes. This is data as of last week, and I know uh, Rochelle is saying it, it keeps on uh, uh, getting updated. Um, and we had um, the town page, 31 comments, about uh, 2 to 1 positive to negative, 21 positive and 10 negative. Um, emails from citizens, this is also last week's numbers, but uh, as of last week, um, we had received almost 100 emails in emails and letters, uh, uh, and again, a little better than a 2 to 1 ratio of favorable to, to not in favor. Uh, and then the, the public schools who mentioned, um, uh, very excited about the potential of using this boat. Uh, for, for their events, for, for field trips and, and student events. Okay, so uh, financials. That, this is a really important part of, of the work we did to figure out, um, you know, one of the concerns was, is this going to bring money into the town or is this going to be a tax burden on the town? So we, we uh, did a lot of looking. We talked to people that are running uh, similar kind of boats and, and we try to be very, very conservative. Um, the last thing we wanted to do is, is come up with numbers that, that turn out to be uh, inflated or wrong. So, so the assumptions, and I'll show you all the assumptions in here, but the assumptions that we made um, uh, were starting out really slow, really doing a, a crawl, walk, run approach with the boat. Um, so based on, on all the work, the bottom line is in that blue box, um, year one, 
uh, we project a, about a $40,000 loss, and that's due mostly to the to the large amount of maintenance that we want to do up front to get the boat in, in uh, tip-top shape, uh, and and also uh, not as much revenue because because the, they're just getting started. Uh, year two uh, with less maintenance, uh, more revenue, uh, and the addition and the addition of another position, the admin, uh, we project a surplus of about ninety-four thousand. Question. Um, some more assumptions on year one. So, so we assumed that we would be boat, uh, operating the boat March through October uh, when the weather was good. Although um, I know the boat would be heavily utilized at Christmas time. Uh, I know that the contractors uh, supporting the base uh, are always looking for a venue like this, many of them for something around this size. So, so I think that, that uh, November and December would be dockside, probably very busy uh, times for the boat. Um, and, and then uh, things like uh, Veterans Day Parade, we would, we would want to make use of it uh, um, and, and any other special events outside of the March through October standard operating time. During those uh, March through October, we figured four public cruises a week, that's the public walks up and buys a ticket and, and goes on a one or two hour cruise. Uh, and then we uh, assumed uh, three additional of those cruises on days like the Veterans Day Parade uh, or the beach party uh, or, or Earth Day um, where there's a lot of people in town we would, we would do more events, more cruises. Uh, dinner theme events, so that's the, uh, in conjunction with restaurants or, or uh, winery or, or uh, you know, 70s disco night or, or whatever. Um, uh, we figured one of them per week and that's, that's where people sign up uh, ahead of time online. Uh, and then the private corporate events, uh, we figured one every other week um, uh, to start. And weddings, we also figured one every other week in year one. Okay. So here's the, uh, what we figured for ticket prices and how that uh, rolls into the revenue that we ended up with. Um, for the public cruises, the walk-up cruises, uh, we figured, uh, again, being conservative, that we'd fill about uh, a third of the boat. So, so we figured 50 passengers, 30 adults, and 20 children um, at ticket prices of $15 for adults and, and six for the uh, children or seniors or other special advocacy groups. Uh, the dinner theme cruises, uh, again, we assumed 50 passengers. Uh, and for those, um, uh, we uh, assumed a $75 uh, fare. Uh, of that, $45 would be revenue uh, back to the boat and 30 for the food. Uh, corporate cruises, uh, we figured $2,500 uh, per event. Um, sponsorships, as of last week, it was, uh, we had $25,000. Uh, we're now up to $45,000 of sponsorships uh, if, if the project goes forward. Uh, and that's, I think, just, just scratching the surface. And then weddings, uh, we assumed uh, $4,000 to rent the boat uh, for a wedding, which uh, in, I think, as I understand it, in the scheme of weddings is a pretty good deal and, and would be pretty popular. Uh, and then grants, the town would continue to be aggressive in pursuing grants associated with the boat. So year one expenses, you can see the, the two big expenses uh, in year one are the salaries, and that's always, that's always uh, the biggest expense even going forward. Uh, and then uh, the second line from the bottom, the initial repairs and maintenance, uh, we assumed $130,000. That, that includes both uh, some, some of the ongoing every year kind of maintenance, but also includes a big chunk of it is the one-time maintenance that we would want to do. The boat is operating now, but we want we would want to operate it better, uh, you know, and, and have it uh, be uh, the venue that we, we want to represent Leonardtown. So a pretty significant investment in year one. Um, there's a loan that would come with the uh, with uh, the purchase of the boat, and there would be a loan payment associated every year. Um, insurance uh, would include liability and, and and all aspects of insurance. Uh, we figured in, and then admin and marketing. Uh, again, we think that's really important for the growth. Uh, fuel uh, is included in the, the uh, repairs, maintenance, and operations. Uh, um, just for information, that we, the boat burns about 12 to 15 gallons uh, per hour when it's in when it's, when it's sailing. Okay. 
So here's um, year one, uh, all those things that we just went through, the revenue uh, and the expenses and how they tally up and how they yield the projected loss in year one of, of $40,000. Okay, year two, this gets easier. Um, a lot of the same assumptions, the only differences are in red. Um, we would assume in the uh, June through September, the prime operating months, um, we, we could probably bump up the, the dinner and theme events to two per week. Uh, and we assume by then uh, that we would uh, probably be booking weddings every week during those months. Year two revenue, uh, nothing changed. Um, uh, we uh, aren't going to bump up prices once we you know, get people hooked or anything. Um, but the sponsorships, again, that number is low. Uh, and uh, you know how high it would be, I'm not sure, but I know it would be more than that. OK, next. Year two expenses, the only two changes there is, is year two is where we would add the administrator. Uh, the person running the, the website, taking tickets, and doing the admin for the uh, for the boat, uh, and also the maintenance and operating would would start to go down. That this is also a heavy investment year. Um, the the end state uh, once we get into running, we think it would be fifty to seventy five thousand dollars a year uh, to maintain and, and operate the boat. So this is a little bit high in year two, also as as we continue to get the initial work done. Next time. So here's. Year two financials, um, and the, the big difference is a uh, little bit more revenue associated with the, the dinner theme cruises and the weddings, uh, a little bit more uh, expense with the salary with the addition of the person, a little bit less expense with the maintenance. Um, but overall, that yields uh, projected surplus uh, money back to the boat slash the town of $94,000. Um, and then uh, you know, we, that's all we did was two years. Um, we think that, that it would uh, continue like that, or probably better, as the, as the maintenance operating costs go down and as the boat becomes uh, more renowned and more popular. OK, infrastructure required. Um, several things that, that would need to happen. The first is, is the slip. Um, as Lachelle mentioned, um, the grant was received, and the, the plans are are being laid for uh, the section, this next section of the slip. Um, on the picture in the bottom, that the, the horizontal to the shore section of the slip is phase two, uh, and, the, and the white box is, uh, is where the boat would be moored, and that's the approximate size of the boat. Um, utilities hookup is included in, in that uh, um, building of, of the second phase of the slips. Um, vehicle parking is, a, is an important one and a big one. Um, the, there's currently 60 spaces down at the wharf. Obviously, a, a full cruise ship could fill up those 60 spaces and more. And, and number one, not have enough room for even people on the boat, let alone not have room for everyone else that wants to use the, the wharf. So we know that, that something would have to be done. Um, we believe that, that the, uh, setting up a trolley um, as part of this project uh, would be the answer. There's there's a thousand uh, or so spaces available in, in downtown Leonardtown at night and on the weekends, um, and the trolley would would uh, you know I I think that probably there would be some spaces that would just stay uh, cordoned off, not to be used by the boat, but but to be used by paddleboarders and kayakers and, and playground goers, um, and the and the trolley would would both bring boat customers down but also be bringing people up and down from the town to the wharf, and, and I think would be uh, a real benefit and, and really the start of, of the next phase of, of the strategic plan that you all have put in place of, of using the waterfront of Leonardtown more and more. Um, <coughs> catering partners, uh, we talked to, to a number of, of caterers and restaurants, and, and I think um, that that we would have uh, lots of participation from, from folks like that wanting to, to uh, operate in partnership with, with the boat. Um, compatibility with other users, that some of the, the comments on, on Facebook, that was one of the concerns, is this is going to uh, crowd out the, the people that are using the wharf now. 
Um, and our thought, that's one of the reasons we did this picture, is it's really uh, out away from, from the wharf um, quite a bit. So it, it's, not, it's not right up in your face at the wharf. It's also not going to use up all the parking uh, the way we're, we're envisioning it. Uh, and, and it is not going to obstruct people's access in and out of the wharf on, on power boards or, or connects. Uh, liquor license would be something important revenue-wise. Um, we wouldn't have to have, the town wouldn't have to have a liquor license associated with it, but uh, it's, it would certainly bring in uh, significant revenue rather than having the restaurants or the, or the caterers uh, use their liquor license. It would probably be a combination, some combination of the two. And then safety and security considerations. We need to make sure uh, both the passengers are safe, that they're getting out to the boat and getting onto the boat, uh, it is handicap accessible on, on the main deck, um, but, but that would all be done safely. And also that the boat is, is kept secure, that, that there's provisions in place to make sure that uh, there's no, one mess, no one's messing with the boat that shouldn't be. Okay. So how would this boat be run? Um, really, there's three ways, and, and we talked to a, a a bunch of different organizations that are running uh, enterprises like this. On the first, the town could own and operate it, and, and uh, we heard early on that that's not a, an option, so, so we didn't even consider that. Uh, the second is private enterprise, and this, this would be uh, a, a public-private partnership, most likely, where, where the, uh, the town uh, is buying the boat, they own it, they hire a private entity to, to run it and to assume the financial risk associated with it. Uh, in exchange, they get revenue back, and, and depending on, on how uh, how good the the private entity is, uh, depends how, how profitable uh, the, the venture is for them. Um, there are uh, similar. We talked to, in particular, uh, Bob Shaw was was a, a guy that we talked to. Uh, he was he's in the, been in the business for about 20 years. Uh, was a COO of a company called Hornblower that that runs operations like this out of Alexandria, and he's also uh, stood up uh, boats like this in a number of cities. Um, and he had, he had a lot of, of good uh, input for us, uh, but that, that's an example. Hornblower is an example of a private enterprise um, uh, running a boat like this. Um, nonprofit is, is the other way this could be run. Leonardtown does have a nonprofit uh, already established. Um, notionally, the nonprofit would, would probably have a, a board of directors, a four-person board, and they would have a number of at-large directors that would come from the community, uh, from all walks of the community, that would have input uh, into how the, the boat was being operated. Um, and the, but either way, private enterprise or nonprofit, uh, they would likely be standing up an a employee base that looks very much like what we talked about a little bit ago. Uh, for a nonprofit, um, there, there's examples of that, that. That's the way the Harrisburg boat is operated. Uh, also, the Port of Leonardtown Winery uh, was stood up as a, a nonprofit partnership with the town uh, and the Calvert Marine Museum. Uh, part of the nonprofit would be an MOU where the town gets revenue sharing as the boat uh, brings in revenue. Okay. So, we're getting toward the end. Uh, <laughs> these slides are. are uh, are, are the risks and the opportunities that, that we have heard from and, and wanted to, to try to address. Um, the first one uh, is, is uh, the revenue doesn't co cover costs. That, that the town would be a money sink. The town would cost the taxpayers money. Um, and that's, that's why we did the, uh, the pretty deep and extensive look at, at revenue versus costs and, and tried to establish uh, very conservatively, what we think that uh, it would cost and what, and what kind of revenue it would bring in. Uh, and as, as we talked, um, we're showing probably the first year there would be uh, a cost associated, and then that would be made up. The, the guy that I mentioned, Bob Shaw from Hornblower, uh, his, his, his thinking, uh, he, that's before we even did the numbers, he said, year one, you're going to lose money. Uh, year two, uh, you may break even or, or not. And then year three and out, you're going to start making money, and you'll make up uh, pretty quickly what you lost in the, in the early early year. Um, so, so uh, we believe uh, that the boat is is going to bring revenue into the town, not not uh, take revenue away from the taxpayers. 
Uh, wharf infrastructure, we've talked about. Um, we think that the, with the addition of the second phase of the pier, that, that the boat will fit in nicely down there. And, and not only not be a detriment, but it, it would be uh, you know, just a, a nice addition to, to the historical, uh, when you look back at, at in the turn of the century, uh, steamboats and power boats were a big part of, of Leonardtown and Brenton Bay here. And it would, it would kind of bring back that era. Specialized workforce not available, so there are some some specialized requirements, particularly the captains, uh, and and to a lesser extent the crew members. Um, the captains, uh, what we've figured out pretty early on is, is not going to be an issue. We, we've already uh, had uh, you know unsolicited uh, been approached by by at least three captains saying they'd be interested in uh, in being the captain or an hourly captain for the boat. Um, the the uh, the crew members. Um, would likely uh, not be hard to find, uh, and, and as far as running the rest of the boat, it'd be it'd be like running a, a restaurant or uh, something similar. Um, unforeseen costs associated with the boat, we we were very mindful of that. Um, the the survey that we did for the boat was done uh, by by a company with a lot of expertise, uh, and also we was directed uh, look hard. You know, be conservative. Make sure that you leave no stone unturned, and and give us your worst case scenario, and that's what we plugged in. Um, so so we think that we've we've uh, done as much as we could uh, working on this study to to uh, account for the potential costs. And we talked um, about the future too. There would be costs uh, down the road as the, a boat like this needs to be refurbed uh, every I think three or four years. Um, so one of the things that we'll be doing with the revenue initially uh, is building up a, a fund, uh, the rainy day fund, that would that would so that any uh, big expenses that came up would be covered. Uh, a COVID impacts the plan. Um, that was that was something that we heard. Um, we think that that this is actually uh, a couple of things. One, it, it wouldn't be operating this year. We would get it in. We'd be doing the maintenance. Uh, and, and so uh, no operations this year uh, while we're still uh, certainly in the middle of, of the impacts of, of COVID. Um, next year, we would plan to start operating. Uh, don't know what's, what the restrictions are going to be, but a couple of things. One, the, the outdoor nature of this lends itself to this could be an outdoor, outdoor activity at a reduced you know, number of people um, that would, that would be a good thing for people to do if we're still under restrictions. Um, the other thing about COVID is is that we we see this uh, as as a positive uh, positive momentum for the town. We know that, that the town's businesses are, are suffering uh, badly, and and we think that the, this could be something that helps both the boat and the clientele that brings, and also the trolley bringing people up and down. We do think, uh, and we heard this from the businesses. Uh, uh, when we talk to them, also that, that they agree uh, that that this would be a good a good uh, potential help for them. And the last one, uh, one of the questions that we were asked was, uh, what if what if all this is wrong and, and the boat uh, you know is is a heap or doesn't no one ever comes on the boat and it's a money loser? Um, what's the exit strategy? That's another thing that we talked about with with Bob Shaw, the guy from from Hornblower, and got some good confidence that. One thing we know is there's there's uh, other municipalities lined up to buy this boat if if we decide if you all decide no, um, then then there's already people that, that want to buy the boat. So uh, we learned that there there is a market for the boat. We think with the hundred thousand dollar grant um, that we received, um, that that would be uh, money that we would have you know, already in, in uh, invested in the boat that wouldn't have to be paid back. Um, so there is an exit strategy that if it, did, if it didn't work out, that we could have some confidence in within. Okay. Opportunities. Um, tourism, brand, visual appeal. I, we just think that, that this could truly be, uh, when people think of Leonardtown, uh, or when they see uh, a brochure on Leonardtown, they see this, this riverboat. Um, it, we just think that it could really contribute to the, the brand of, of Leonardtown. Um, we think it could provide uh, educational benefits. We think it could provide environmental. One of the inputs that we got from one of the companies is, is make this uh, uh, environmentally 
uh, a project. You know, figure out how to operate this boat um, more clean. Uh, maybe have contests uh, to, to uh, figure out how to, to be cleaner, to be education uh, friendly, uh, environmentally. Um, we think that, uh, that the boat would attract more people down to the, to the waterfront and that, that is certainly something that, that you all hear uh, I think from from citizens uh, as we do surveys and stuff that uh, that people want a reason and want something to do that has to do with the water if they live in water town. Um, we believe that that this boat would provide positive cash flow uh, after after year one, um, uh, certainly after year two, um, from outside the area as well as from from local citizens. Uh, it would strengthen partnerships with, with all those potential partners that we, we uh, listed and that we have talked to uh, the vast majority of them and, and got a lot of uh, excitement. Um, positive impact on local businesses, I think that's, that's really important and I think that that uh, that, that would happen. Uh, increased water access, we <coughs> talked about um, potential income streams, so this, uh, you know, if it works out like, like we believe it will and, and I keep on saying it, but, but our assumptions, we think, were very conservative. Uh, this would not be a tax burden to the town. It would be tax revenue to the town. That could be used however you all decide to use it, whether it's investments in the, in the wharf uh, or, or whatever. Uh, and then finally, this begins implementation of the, of the waterfront plan that, that's an approved uh, document. <coughs> So this, this slide is from the waterfront plan, and uh, we think that, that the boat, um, as, as it's being envisioned, meets the recommendation both of the strategic plan from, from a year and a half ago and the waterfront plan from 2012. Okay, so two more slides, um, <laughs> conclusion. Um, the the black-eyed Susan or the Bell of Breton Bay, or whatever it's going to be called, gives back. That that is important. We 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 see this as a as a citizen friendly, community friendly endeavor that's going to that's going to give back uh, to the community, um, both economically. Uh, it's going to it's going to be an important icon uh, in revenue from the, all the things that we talked about uh, and tourism, both both direct people paying to go on the boat and also people paying to go to the businesses in town because they were down visiting the boat. Uh, historical re relevance, um, the picture on the, on the lower uh, right of this slide is, um, is the Adams Floating Theater. Um, this was a, a theater that in the, in the early 1900s would, uh, a barge that held, and that, I told the mayor it was 700, I read again, it was actually 850 <laughs> people would go on that barge and watch and watch uh, uh, plays. Uh, it would come for a week and they'd do a different play every week, uh, sitting right down there where, uh, where we're proposing that, that this boat sits. Um, programming uh, opportunities to, to link with, with all sorts of uh, historical uh, uh, societies and, and uh, venues. Uh, education, uh, we've mentioned a couple times, the Board of Education is excited, uh, as well as the, the Warnberg School and the Forest Tech Center. Uh, and then the ability to, to take care of the, the uh, people the people that we want to advocate for. Um, seniors, uh, kids, uh, first responders, uh, veterans. Okay, and the last slide. Summary, so, so we, um, the, the fact-finding committee uh, was, I think, 11 people with, with really uh, wide-ranging and relevant expertise. We really had, uh, I think, a good, thorough look at, at uh, examples that are relevant to the way this boat would be operated on uh, and, and did a, a good look at, at uh, how this boat would be operated and, the, and uh, what that would mean financially. We reached out to a lot of people and got a lot of input. Um, the conservative business case and financials uh, show that the boat would be an economic catalyst for the town uh, in year two and beyond. Um, with the addition of the parking shuttle, which, which you can't overemphasize how important that is, both for the boat and for the town, I think, uh, it fits in really nicely with the current usage of the wharf area and the planned growth for the wharf area. Uh, and then, and then uh, Mile Maple Pie, the, the boat just contributes to 
to the vision of downtown as a charming historic uh, town that it is. Uh, we think that, that the time uh, is uniquely uh, now, both with the grant received, the availability of the boat that, that we uh, got first in line for, uh, and, and the work that we've done. Blathered on and on. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Doug. Give a little more yeah. background here. Sure. I just I want to thank the committee. They worked very hard to get a true picture to give to the council today in making the decision. Uh, Catherine Stormont from the uh, county's economic development um, department. Andrew Ponte. He's a resident, a former director of a um, riverboat like this, and also has a lot of tourism experience. Wynn Briscoe from the Small Business Development uh, Commission. Eric Serjanik, who is a uh, captain of the uh, Pride of Susquehanna, he, he came down here a number of times from Harrisburg and was very um, invaluable for his, his expertise. Doug, uh, he put a ton of hours of work in, uh, into this. Um, John Fleury, uh, commercial real estate. Matt Vilbus, he's a 200-ton boat captain. He also has a wealth of experience in uh, running boats and uh, he has his own marine services uh, company. He did an extensive survey on the boat and uh, was able to provide us um, the, um, the overview of the cost that he thinks would be needed over the next five years. And then Mary and Larry Ludwig, who are here with us today just as residents, uh, Mary Slade and uh, Dan Burris and myself, we, we worked with the committee, but they did a, a really great job and none of them have a vested financial interest. I saw that comment. There's no one on the committee that had any financial gain from this. Um, it, they did it as a volunteer of their own time. And I just wanted to reiterate a couple of the answers to questions because they come up over and over again, and so it might help um, save some time on audience questions. Parking, we heard that a lot. Doug talked about it a lot. It can't be addressed on site. We've known that since 2002 when we started the, the waterfront development. We know that a shuttle is imperative. We have a thousand spaces in town that are available night and uh, weekends and holidays. And uh, running that shuttle will, will not only benefit this boat, but also the other businesses, as well as the businesses in the north part of town at the shopping centers and um, the winery. Uh, we have boats come in all the time that need to get to uh, get groceries and things, and so they could utilize us as well. Um, that it's a money pit. I think the, the committee has been very conservative with their estimates for their usage as well as the fees. We really tried to, to dig into this with different um, real life examples. The um, Hornblower um, COO, he was very helpful in looking at our numbers and seeing if we were being uh, reasonable and he thought we were being very conservative. Um, additionally, the extensive surveys and uh, work that we did to find out the condition of the boat we do show the loss in the beginning of the, uh, the first year, um, but even considering um, over $200,000 putting back in the boat, we do realize, um, or think that there will be a profit in this, starting the second year. Um, the options for operating the boat, there are three different ways we can go. It doesn't have to be decided tonight. Um, the town does not really want to operate it itself. Um, we have the opportunity to purchase the boat. We can put it out an RFP and then we can come back to you with how we want to do it, whether it's through a nonprofit or through a private entity. There would be agreements and MOUs that would be um, drawn up to say how those funds would be um, allocated as a profit would be shown. And then the exit strategy. Uh, we have immediately have 100,000 in equity uh, upon purchase of the boat. And um, we have also talked with um, um, the hornblower gentleman. He called some different um, consultants. And we feel like maybe a year to sell the boat would be a reasonable time frame. Within that time frame, if the only real cost that you would have would be the, the loan payment and the insurance if you weren't operating it while it's for sale. And that would be about 24000 a year. Um, so it's not that you have to be putting out hundreds of thousands of dollars if you really are looking to sell it. Um, I did pass on to the council all correspondence, emails, phone calls, um, up until about 3.45 today. You had some at the table today. I emailed you a lot today. Um, at the last minute we received the um, 
letter from the state uh, tourism uh, in support and the LBA. The LBA letter had um, all the different correspondence that included on the second and third pages of the different businesses uh, in addition to the ones that I had sent you uh, previously. Um, so hopefully that answers a lot of the questions. Yeah, got it. Um, do you want to read this one? Yeah. Okay. Um, so this is the one from the uh, Maryland um, Tourism Department of Commerce, the Tourism Department. On behalf of the Maryland Department of Cor Commerce, or Office of Tourism and Film, I wish to convey my support for the Leonardtown Wharf paddle, boat wheel, paddle Wheel Boat Project. The State of Maryland has demonstrated strong commitment over the years to the promotion of Maryland tourism and its associated impacts on job creation, revenues, and local business development. The Paddle Wheel Boat Project will promote the Leonardtown waterfront's history and culture, support local businesses, the growing arts community, and will strengthen the positive momentum that's already transforming your town. The events held on the Paddle Wheel Boat are expected to attract a wide variety of visitors who have the ability to sig significantly impact the local and state economy with increased day trips and overnight stays. I am pleased to support this project for the town of Lonertown and look forward to expanding our marketing and promotional partnerships to include the paddle wheel boat in its relative related events and activities. Projects such as this have the opportunity to transform the area into a more authentic and prosperous community. And that's uh, from Liz Fitzsimmons, um, Managing Director of the Office of Tourism. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I think that's important. You know, she's talking about the partnerships and the marketing. That's that's going to be <coughs> marketing to people outside of the St. Mary's County area, and, and the state's willing to help us with that. So I think that's huge. There. Uh, just want to kind of mention about the sponsors, the, the people that have stepped up and. My wife and I are one of those. We, uh, through our insurance agency, we are putting up $25,000 as a donation slash sponsorship if, if, if the council goes through with this. After I announced that, we've had four, three other people step up. Um, Mike Ballmall stepped up with $5,000. Um, Colonel Rich Richardson stepped up with $5,000. And then uh, just uh, earlier today, we got an email from uh, uh, John Flurry saying he and his wife put up ten thousand. So we've got the forty-five thousand. That's where the forty-five thousand, <coughs> excuse me, is coming from. And that's not a loan or it's not a partnership. It's just a donation as a sponsor. So I just want to make that clear. Um, other thing, I I did talk to uh, uh, Gary Bell the other day. And with the fire department, and you know, I can see this once this is up and running, this could be a fundraising event for the fire and rescue squad. So you know, we're, we're looking at that also. So I mean, look at the big picture. So. Okay. We do have 12 people on Zoom um, and a participating audience. Right? Okay. And yeah, would any audience would like to come up and make some comments? Sure. For the record, just. Name, put your name and address. Uh, uh, Councilman uh, Francisco Fernandez, lived in Arlington for 14 years. Um, I learned about that recently. I don't have Facebook, so that's my fault. A um, couple concerns. I, it's a beautiful boat. Thanks for the presentation. I mean, personally, I would love the boat there, but I have a big but. I'm a taxpayer. Um, there's a huge risk. Some of them are represented. Uh, but the estimates, I have a few questions. Uh, the nonprofit organization that Andrew worked for, their taxes are public. So if you can go and see the taxes, they've been out of last since 2015. So they lose 20,000, let's see, 50, on 2015 they made 55,000. They lost 11,000 on 2016. They lost 21,000 in 2017. They lost 100,000 in 2018. Uh, the next uh, tax reports are not public yet. So that we don't know the last, the current year and the last. Uh, to note, even though they have a loss, they also gain close to a hundred thousand dollar grant every year. So at a hundred thousand dollars, we don't get a grant. So we're talking about a hundred and fifty, two hundred dollar loss every year if, if we can match what Harrisburg does. I'm a Penn State student. 
I live in, I went to high school in Pennsylvania. I'm well aware of what Harrisburg offers. It's a 50,000 uh, population city. We're what, 5,000? Uh, we're not going to get the same traffic Harrisburg gets. We're not going to make that money. Th this should be a private ownership. The town should not own a boat. There's a big ethical responsibility if we have a private institution funding a wedding venue that competes with other Samaris wedding venues. We're basically funding a boat that will compete with local businesses. That's unethical because we're, we're, some of our funds as a taxpayer are promoting that business over the other ones. So we're all concerned about small businesses and we try to support those businesses that are here in Lenerton. I go to the restaurants I like. I go every week as much as I can. We cannot fund a, a, an institution that's going to take business away from other local entities. That is just not right. Uh, I know this was presented as a rare paddle boat. Go on Google. There's plenty of paddle boats for sale. There's nine paddle boats, one of them being the Black Eyed Susan. There's plenty of boats out there. We can wait. As Council Ball, Councilman Colin suggested, this is not the time. We can wait. We don't need to rush into this. Uh, we have the closest competition up in Alexandria. There's a cherry blossom uh, paddle wheel. If you live in DC, are you going to come to Lenar Town? You're going to do it locally. If you're in the area, where are you going to go? It takes most people two hours here, two hours to come back, four hours. They're spending the whole day. We know how well the hotel went. We're going to need a new hotel to, to, that will be great. But let's be realistic here. We're competing with DC. We're competing with cities that have much higher population than we do. It's very difficult <laughs> for us to think we're going to make money out of this. Um, the, money, the, the cost that uh, Doug suggested, $75 a person. I can afford it. That's not a normal person's salary. A four-person family, it's $300 for a two-hour trip. That leaves a lot of our population, local and layer town, unable to take advantage of this. And we're part, partly owners, which is the worst part. So obviously the thing is, what are we getting as residents? Um, privacy, I think there's a fourth option that wasn't mentioned that was also suggested by some of the residents last meeting. Um, <laughs> this doesn't have to be town ownership. Do a co-op, do an LLC, let the LBA take over it. Get somebody else to take the risk. It's a great idea, but the town should not put their money into the ownership of something that can basically go the other way. I'm sorry. And, 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 and I think we all see it and we feel it. And if everything goes rosy and everything goes well, yes, we'll make $300,000 a year. I personally don't think that will ever happen unless we turn that boat into a casino. Uh, I'm sorry. It's a beautiful boat. Don't get me wrong, but it's not for the town of Leonard Town to the public money to put that there. We cannot compete with local businesses. That's just completely unethical. I'm sorry. Um, as I said, I, I think I made most of my points, and thanks, Ms. McKay, Mayor, Doug. I think you all basically explained, and, and thanks for the committee. You put a lot of time, I understand. But uh, it's a pretty boat, but a pretty picture it may cost us a lot of money in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Next, anyone else? Yes. I'm Roger Magnum. I'm with the Learntown Volunteer Fire Department. President Bell couldn't be here today, so he asked me to come to tell you the safety effects of this. Uh, Learntown Fire Department doesn't right now have a boat. We're looking into getting one. We're kind, we don't know, but we're looking into that. Uh, the nearest boat to, it, to us is either Valley Lee or 7th District. Uh, either one of those boats, it's a five minute dispatch time and then another 15 to 20 minutes to get here if something would happen in Breton Bay Narrow. The wharf is set up nicely for if there was a fire or something out there. Stand pipes out there, uh, line out there, water line, dry hydrant out there. Good job. And I just want to and get, and I'm not here uh, saying yes or no on the boat. I'm just telling you the aspect of the safety thing and how long it would take a boat to get here in case something did happen. That's, that's what Gary told me to come here and relay because he couldn't get here. So I want you to know the closest boat's 15 minutes away. It would be 
at least 15 minutes. It would be at the uh, closest place to put off would be Abel's Wharf. So it would be, and that's where this boat would go from Wharf out to St. Clement's Island, probably, and back. But anyway, it's at least a 15 minute thing. So I want to let everybody know that as, as a safety safety thing. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I know we've got a bunch outside too, but we'll get the first ones. Okay. We'll, we will try to ask people to keep it to just a couple of minutes here. My name is Sean Lawson. I live in Leonardtown. Thank you, Council and fellow residents, for listening to me. I'll try to make this brief. I thought long and hard about what I wanted to say to everybody, and I've been listening to a lot of the objections because I think this is a good idea right out of the gate. I thought it was a good idea, so I thought, okay. What do we need to do when we debate? Think about what people are going to say that's negative, see if we can you know, find the positive, and then weigh them. My theme is inclusion. I think this is a community thing. I think that there's a lot of people that don't have access to the water, be it school children or people with disabilities, what have you. There's a lot of water around here that people don't get to engage with, and this gives them the ability to do that, in, in my mind. I would also say thanks to all of the people that did work on this. That's an impressive amount of metrics that we have to look at, and I feel like this is a home run. If you miss a swing on this, for me, it's you're not a ball player. Um, to address some of your concerns, I would say funds are gonna be returned to the town. So this being some sort of competition, businesses are always com competing, right? So if it's a, if it's a wedding event, it's not directly competing, it's giving money back to the town, right? And you've got other businesses that can be catered on this boat. So Slice House or OTP can send their food onto the boat. So to me, that's more of a community feel. To address the, um, let's see, the timing. The timing is now we have $100,000 in the bank on this already. That's not coming back. Nobody else has that to brag about. And so I think that puts us ahead of the game as well. And from to your point, sir, about the fire department and the safety. We're doing this right now. COVID, this was another thing that was addressed. This is the time to do it because we're at a kind of lull. We can work on this thing. We can work on the safety. We can work on these pieces and get them together before this thing hits the street. And <clears throat> speaking with, sorry, I'm trying to rush through this, <laughs> but speaking with some of our neighbors, uh, one neighbor told me, these are all Leonardtown residents, how can a place that says it's an arts and entertainment destination pass up such a perfect opportunity? I agree with that. This seems like a home run once again. The enrichment that it would give this community is priceless. I had another neighbor that said, growing up, we went to the Susquehanna for our class field trips. That's four, four and a half hours away. That's bringing in people from exponentially longer distances than probably come here now in conjunction with the hotel, you fill up the hotel, and then I guarantee you, and Doug said this, but that base has changed commands. They, they have companies that pay for the employees' Christmas parties, they pay for the hotels, they fund things like this, and it happens regularly. There's 200 of them, and there's a book right outside by the front door that you can grab the, the tech corridor that goes down 235. Um, just today, um, one of my work colleagues said Chesapeake Biological Laboratories in Solomon to do something in concert with them would be amazing. Um, I'm for it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just to, uh, the hotel has been mentioned twice. They hope to be open by the end of this year. Anyone else in here? <coughs> Hi, my name is Joe Bevan. Um, I'm a resident and a business tax payer in the town. Uh, I'm not in favor of the town purchasing the boat. I don't think that uh, the use of public funds to buy the boat is appropriate. Uh, all the benefits that I, all the advantages that I'm hearing coming out of buying the boat, I see that possible with a private entrepreneur, a private business buying the boat as well. And I think that's much more appropriate uh, way to, to go about getting the boat. I think it's a great opportunity. Uh, I see the benefits to the town, but using uh, taxpayers' funds for it, I don't think is appropriate. Um, I also think that a decision of this financial magnitude should be voted, up, voted upon by all the citizens of the town. 
put it out on a, on a town referendum so that the people who pay the taxes in Leonardtown get to make the decision as opposed to all the people in the county who aren't paying for the vote. Uh, I can tell you not everyone in the town understands that, that that's what's going to happen. My wife owns a business. She's talked to no fewer than three people that one thought the grant was going to pay for it entirely. Uh, another one thought that the county was going to pay for it. So not everybody that who is a town resident understands that, that their money is going to be used to buy the boat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Ken of the Slice House 1 and 2. <laughs> um, I just want to take off uh, the financial frightening of this. I do have an, a group of people that are all Leonard Town residents that are willing to assume all the financial risk of the boat. So the conversation should be about parking and, and the shuttle and all those things. But the boat itself, um, if you did want a private entity, I do have a group of people that are willing to take on all the financial risk. And then that's what you know, the council decides to move forward with the purchase, then next several months we'll set up, figure out how we're going to set, set everything up. Well, we, have Whether it's, we have a private enterprise that wants to buy the boat. Why are we having a boat? Let, the, yeah, let, let them handle it. Yeah. Let them buy it. We'll help them. Because I will say this. I'm sorry, Sean Rich, I live in Singletree. And I wish I would have taken notes because there was a lot of different aspects of this presentation I would have loved to go on through. Come one, to I'm sorry I'm coming to this party late. I haven't, I haven't engaged with this because I didn't know there was a paddle boat Facebook page or, or these other Facebook pages, which if that's your scientific survey for likes and dislikes upon this, we got issues. Mm -hmm. That's not taken away from what the, 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 the uh, committee did. I'm sure they did a, a fantastic job. I'm a budget analyst on base. From that, from, from that description, that's a great sales pitch. But if you were to go into any bank and try and get a loan for a boat with that, they laugh you out the door because we didn't see marketing reports. And I'm not saying that they're not there, but you got to let us see them before we vote to spend our money. And as far as grants, this is the last thing I'm going to say. I have much other stuff to say. But as far as grants, everybody keeps saying, well, it's not our tax dollars. That is our tax dollars. We send it up to the state, and guess what? It comes back to us after bureaucrats, and we pay for every other function of government. We're actually spending. That hundred thousand dollars, we probably spent more to send it up there and get it back. And now we're going to say, "Oh, we're getting three hundred thousand dollars." It costs us more to send it up there. It's just let's not pretend like it's not going to cost us. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, Chris Bates, Leonard Town resident. Good to see you. Again. Uh, just a few questions, uh, and, and thank you for the committee that did all the work on this. That's awesome. Uh, I think that the, the effort that went behind it was great, and appreciate us not having to do that. It did bring up a few questions for me, though. Uh, what makes us believe that we can succeed where Harvard, Harvard de Grace failed? I mean, they're selling the boat. Why? He's, well, going, he's going through a divorce. OK, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Did we investigate their financials, though? <laughs> to go back to the business angle of this, did we investigate their financials? And does that back up what we're doing? Well, he's got some health issues, too. So the, the last year, he had, it's been operating, but not, not like it. Okay, understandable, understandable. Uh, what assurances do we have that this will not cost taxpayers any dollars? I mean, I'm curious, as a taxpayer in the town, am I going to end up having to foot the bill for this at all? Well, that's what we're talking about, the exit strategy. Even if it doesn't work, you know, we've got this $100,000. But, but, but we, we, we could, I mean, there we could years, sell it. But if it fails for us, the buyers are going to go away, yep. right? If we fail at it, there will be fewer buyers. All right. What assurances do we have that this won't be turned into a gambling site? Right? Sure. To gambling. Oh, nice. To gambling. <laughs> well, it's for some people, they'd like that, right? But we were sold on one story, right? <laughs> And if it does fail, gambling is always an option to make it profitable again. And are we going to put that to a vote? And then that just gets to my last point is uh, I agree with the resident that said, hey, this is a significant financial burden on our town. Let's let town residents vote 
on it and increase the publicity around it so we can all be informed and you can get the feedback from the town. Yeah, there, were, there was good effort to reach to do community <coughs> outreach by the community or by the committee. How about though, let's put it to a real vote and see what residents think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Christina Giro, I'm a resident of the town. Um, question on the... Just, why don't you give us your address also? Oh, sorry, I'm on 23085 Hollywood Road, I'm on the um, Hollywood Leonard Town Road. Um, the uh, total purchase cost of the uh, boat appears to be in the 300,000s. I understand it's a $100,000 grant. There's a low interest fund, a low interest loan. Um, but there are obviously additional purchase costs and infrastructure costs that haven't really been detailed and addressed in that the cost to the taxpayer, the, ta the potential um, uh, excuse me, sponsorship, sponsorships and partnerships, um, those numbers I think need to be more defined before we make a, a, any kind of a purchase of this magnitude, um, as well as the operational agreement as to who's going to run the boat. Um, I appreciate the research that was done. The committee has done a wonderful job of providing information and a sales presentation, but the operational um, detail of a private entity or a nonprofit, there is mention of a Leonardtown um, Recreation something nonprofit, and I'm sorry I don't have any more details than that because there wasn't anything shared, but the, if there is a nonprofit in um, existence, where's the information on that? Where's the, the detail on that that provides us the assurance that this can be run at a profit for the town? Um, there's mention of an MOU. Has that been negotiated? Has that even been discussed yet? So do we know that any of the revenue would be coming back to the town versus the nonprofit um, or whomever the nonprofit shares with? Obviously, nonprofit speaks to itself. Um, those are my immediate questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor Burris. Thanks, town council members, and my sincere appreciation to the commission who did, I think, an outstanding job. I mean, very comprehensive work. Seriously appreciate your hard work because I think you've given us the information that we need. I'm, the, I'm one of the owners of Sweet Bay Restaurant in Leonardtown. I grew up in Leonardtown. I love Leonardtown. I've watched Leonardtown be a thriving, thriving town like when I was a child and I've seen it boarded up. When I <coughs> considered with my partners coming into the town with a restaurant, we looked at what was happening, some of the very positive things, because obviously investors want to have their businesses thrive. What we saw were some really great things happening. We saw the winery as a huge important step that the leadership of the town took to make sure that the town continued to move forward, and I would applaud the leadership saying what a great, great investment that was. I view this very similarly. Right now, we are, as business owners, we bring in our customers to come to our businesses. What I would like to see is for Leonardtown to be a real destination so that people come and from their visit, then they, they go to the various businesses around. So for instance, they come in, they take a cruise. Perhaps they take the shuttle to the winery. They go to one of the restaurants to eat. They go to an art gallery. All of a sudden, Leonardtown has more to offer than a single stop. And right now, as a business owner, I will tell you, I think we draw on our customers. Other businesses draw on their customers. And there's not a lot of interaction. I think increasing the patronage could happen if we had Leonardtown be more of a destination. Um, I am impressed, actually, with the financial um, information that was provided here today. I think it, uh, it gives us a really solid uh, footing to go forward. I do think that there are um, always risks, but I think the risks have been properly talked about, and I think the mitigations are in place. So obviously, I am very hopeful that we take advantage of this opportunity. When I was a child, I spent very little time on the water here, unless, unless my grandfather's work boat. However, um, we didn't have a boat. And I think it would be awesome, 
as residents of this community to have a way to appreciate the beautiful waterways that we have because they are incredible. So again, I'm hoping that we vote for this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, my name is Kenny Scully. I live at 41535 Trace Court, Leonardtown. Uh, I'm here today to say that I am not in favor of the town purchasing the boat. I don't think it should be purchased with taxpayers' funds. Um, if there's a private entity that wants to undertake this endeavor, I'm all for them to go full, full speed ahead but I don't think the taxpayers should be the ones to try and foot this bill, whether it goes or it doesn't go. Uh, also, uh, one other thing uh, that Roger mentioned about, uh, uh, you know, if something happens, um, we're talking about a boat now that uh, carries 140 people. Uh, if it was to have an incident out in Britain Bay, St. Mary's County does not have the resources available to it to respond to that mass incident of trying to retrieve those people. If you can remember a few years ago when the El Toro sunk down at Point Lookout, and that was, I don't remember, there's a whole lot less people on board it. There was a lot of difficulties getting resources out to retrieve those people and unfortunately some people perished in it from hypothermia because they weren't able to get them out of the water. Um, that's just something else that the town should take into consideration. Um, uh, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mike Momo, Paragon Properties. My business is right over here in the Drury Building. Uh, 20 years ago, when I bought Frank Coons' old building on the square and wanted to add to it, luckily there was three parking spaces behind it, and I couldn't do it if I didn't have the three parking spaces. So back then we talked to Chipper, the mayor, I think your father was there, Todd Delahaye, and they decided to change the parking regulations of town. They had to invest in the parking lots. They lost money on these parking lots for years, the investment they put into it. But then what did the town get out of it? It got the profit building, it got the dry building, it got the local building, and Sweet Bay. We could never have done it if the town did not invest in the town. And that, to me, is, that tells the whole story. That's how it all got started 20 years ago. And then, like somebody said before, the winery wouldn't be here if they hadn't invested it. It seems to me that worked out fine, as far as I know. So this is another investment in the town that I think would just be a great thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jamie Weber. I live at 23285 Jennifer Ford in Singletree. Um, Joey, basically, you said everything that I wanted to say, so thank you for that. I did not even know about this meeting until about Friday, so it was not advertised well at all for any residents in Leonardtown, so I'm a little disappointed in that. But um, my biggest safety thing is also what Roger said about we do not have any boats that can get to any person if there is a medical emergency. I've been in Leonardtown Rescue Squad now for over 20 years. I have 22 years in EMS. If somebody has a stroke or a heart attack or something like that, we're in big trouble. EMS is in big trouble in St. Mary's County. Today, Leonardtown had 17 calls. Two were in Leonardtown. We were going to Lexington Park all day long. So that is a big concern if there is a medical emergency on that boat and we cannot get to that person. So that is my biggest concern with safety with that boat. So, and as a taxpayer and safety, I vote no. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. 
Jamie, I found out about the meeting from your Facebook post for uh, like 12 o'clock. Thank you. So thank you for that. Hi, I'm Ellen Lewis. I'm president of the Allentown Business Association, and I think you have my letter of support. Um, I think it's important to look at this not as an expenditure, but as an investment. As business owners, business owners put money into things. They put money into appreciating assets on which they expect return on investment. And that is exactly what this is. It's not simply a return on investment of a particular vehicle but a return on investment in our town. It is a way to bring people in. I own a business and I see people coming day trips from, Mer from up in Maryland, from Annapolis, from oh, across the King George Bridge. They come to Leonardtown. They're interested. I wish there was more to do on the water. This is what I hear again and again. This boat project provides that destination. It is a draw for people to come in. It brings people in, and when there's a steady flow of traffic into the area, that encourages other businesses to put their business in Leonardtown, which in turn is part of the machine that makes money and fills the coffers of our tax revenue. This is how it works. This is why the boat is important. It's not just a money sink. It's not a money pit. I hadn't planned on coming out speaking on this. This is an investment in what we as a community see for ourselves, how we see Leonardtown going yeah. forward, and how we provide an opportunity for our local visitors and our out-of-town visitors that drives business and the economy, not just in Leonardtown, but through the county. I implore you to consider this, not as an expenditure, but as an investment. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Mary Cox. I live at 41640 Camelier, and I've been a resident of Leonardtown for 15 years, and a member of the rescue squad for about eight to 10 years. I don't know exactly. I um, sent an email today to the town commissioners. I don't know if you received it. You may have received it, because I sent it late. May not have, because I sent it late in the day. Yep. I, I, I am not in favor of the, um, the purchase of this at this point in time. And I have a lot of concerns about it that I don't feel like have been adequately um, um, answered by the public. And I don't feel like there's been enough public input. I just became aware of the slide presentation this afternoon. I don't know when it was put on the town website, but I had been checking the town website fairly regularly. In fact, I had even emailed you about some minutes that I felt like were, were being late, were late posted. So I don't feel like the, that there's been enough, um, enough input from the citizens and the taxpayers of the town, and I would support it, it, it going to more of a, of a um, information meetings and and then bring it to a to a vote among the town residents thank you and, and for my my concerns may be addressed later but so far they have not been addressed and and at this point today i would urge you to vote no thank you thank you thank you thank you <laughs> I'm not getting all I am on. <laughs> My name is uh, Thomas Mattingly, senior. I live on 415 at Oyo Court. Um, just, I sent you all some questions and all. I uh, haven't received any response back from any of that, but the, the two questions that really stand out in my mind is why is there still 190000 of debt against this vote? If this, if this gentleman was so profitable, so successful, and maybe he's had some hard times for the last couple of years, I don't understand why he has $190,000, which is assumable debt that, that you all would take. The second thing is you need to take and do a real good survey of the depth of the water in Breton Bay. 
Uh, I've lived in the town or around near the town all my life. I can remember when it was 13 feet of water down there. I, the last time I was on it, it was six feet out away from the wharf. You better survey the entire channel going out. That's a federal channel that goes all the way to the Black Buoy from the wharf, just up past the wharf. But that's silted in something terrible over the years, and you better check that entire channel instead of just dropping a stick over at the end of the wharf at the pier where you're going to dock at now. Um, you know, the other answers that were given, uh, that's pie in the sky and that's wishful thinking. Um, if everything goes perfect, yeah, that might work. But I really have, have concerns. Uh, finally, in the closing thing, I think if, if you all want to make a real investment that's good for the wharf, is to uh, try to acquire some of the other vacant land that's there and try to clean up the uh, remnants of the old ice plant and get it to where it's usable. You know, there's been a tremendous investment by the town at the wharf. But there were some opportunities that were missed. But beyond that, you need to, to get access, access to some of that additional land that's available there. Because once it's gone, it's gone. You, you've lost a couple of buildings already that, you know, maybe there was an opportunity for them. But if you can secure more land down there and get the old remnants of the ice plant out of the way, you know, it's, it'll be usable. Right now, it's not usable. You can't do anything with it. And the boat ramp is really not, uh, it's not a legal boat ramp. It was put there for one purpose. And I don't, you know, I mean, it's being used now for kayaks, but it was put there for the boat ramp, for the boat races, and that was done illegally. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hollywood Road, Runnertown, Maryland. I'm opposing the um, proposed uh, paddle boat project, uh, mainly because I don't, don't believe it should be a taxpayer-funded project. Um, if it's going to be something going on down there, I think it should be a private sector type of deal. I'm not going to rehash everything that Mr. Bevan said, but I totally agree with everything he did said. I also believe there is a serious uh, public safety concern with that in regards to not only the fire side of it, the EMS side of it, but environmentally, if there was some type of spill or something to come from that, how is that going to affect us? And what studies have been done environmentally and how that's going to affect it? Um, again, my, uh, I encourage you to vote no for the project. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Jeff Sherman, and I will keep this brief. Um, and I'm going to talk to you from a perspective of a government support contractor. Fifteen years ago, I started a small business. Um, today, we're over 300 people, and we're doing a lot of support with Pax River. Um, over the years, as a company owner, we've experienced um, quite a hardship, if you will, of trying to find something to do for our employees, whether they're company-wide events or executive level activities or individuals superior performance and providing something for them to do. So as a company owner, um, as well as a St. Mary's County resident, I look forward to supporting the River Vote project, both as a possible sponsor as well as a client. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Any comments? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Rich Price. Uh, I'm at uh, 23270 Jennifer Court in uh, Singletree. Um, I completely oppose this idea. Uh, there's a lot of, you heard a lot of businesses coming up here saying that, you know, hey, we think this is great. Let's go ahead and do it. Let them buy it. I'm a taxpayer here. I don't want to spend my money on something like this. Um, I don't see the benefits. Um, the amount of financial support that went into this, like I heard other people saying before, you know, Bob, oh, it's going to bring back money. Okay, where do we actually do that research? Where's the actual data behind it? When I look at this, I see fluff. There's, there's nothing in here to, for me to sit there and say, I can actually make any type of recommendations. And no offense, I apologize. But I really need you know, to see more concrete data to show that this is actually going to go ahead and bring in some sort of money. And I was like, for the individual who just came up here and said, you know, 
this is an investment in the town? Yeah, I agree. It could potentially be an investment in the town. But I also tell you as a boat owner, I don't buy a boat for investment. I buy a boat for pleasure because I know I'm throwing my money away when I use my boat. So some of the other. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else outside? Joe Curley from the Rex. Um, I think that's a good opportunity. Also a resident. Also a resident. I think it's a good opportunity for Larry Town. I'd like to see more people coming in town. Um, I think it ties us to the water for people who don't know about Larry Town. Uh, Riverboat, Larry Town, water. So I just think it's a good opportunity. And um, I think next summer is going to be a tough summer. I think a lot of people are going to be going other places and trying to find other things to do. Leonard Town has done a great job supporting us so far, and um, I think we need something. And I'd hate to sit around next summer and say, um, what can we do to get people in here? This is an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Sean Coogan with Social in Leonard Town. Um, I just wanted to come up and speak because I've heard a lot of businesses that are in support of it and I uh, think that there needs to be something in town uh, that we don't have right now. And I do believe we need something in town. I believe it could even be this boat. But I also believe that it's incredibly difficult for me when I have a number of customers come in asking me for my opinion on it and I don't have anything concrete to really tell them that I think this is a great idea. Uh, the slideshow on the financial side reminded me of something like I would give my father when I was trying to convince him to buy me a muscle car when I was 16. You know, I, I see what it is. It's, I feel like being fed all of the, the pluses without any of the negatives. And anybody that goes and buys a business that wants to do their due diligence should be able to pull the financials from the past few years of what that, we're not buying a boat, we're also buying a business. So where are the financials from the that business from the past few years. Health issues, all that stuff, that definitely plays a part in it, but it's not the only paddle boat. And I'm sure that it's not the only nonprofit paddle boat, and I'm sure we can find a ton of other towns and do, you know, I just think there needs to be a little bit more market research in before we just sell the town. This is a great idea, and if you don't agree, then you, you don't want the town to grow. I just want to be able to actually tell customers and, you know, members of the town, anyone, hey, this is a great idea and I support it and this is why. I, I just don't want to tell them that because I think it might be a good idea. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else outside there? <clears throat> Anyone else again? No. 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 Okay. There's 11 people on Zoom. Um, you don't have them muted, do you? Okay. If anyone wants to unmute and say anything on Zoom. No one on Zoom wants to uh, comment? Okay. All right. Council members, comments, questions? Yes, I'll, I'll just start by saying I want to thank the committee. Doug, I mean, great job. Everyone did a great job putting it together, presenting. Um, I do have some questions. I think maybe yeah, I have a couple too. everyone yeah, else do does too. too so. I guess my first question to start out, um, I know at the one meeting I asked if Rebecca was going to be involved. So, Rebecca, do you have any comment? Or do we know what kind of where we stand for the future on the budget with this, if we add this in? I did not participate in any of the committee meetings. Okay, so you've been not involved so in any of this. Yeah, all I have is uh, the estimate of what we think the year one total use of fund balance would be. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I will, I will kind of address that a little bit. Um, you know, the, the councils in the past, we, we try to keep a fund balance of about 50% um, in reserve. And that's, you know, until she does the, uh, the audit, not going to know exactly what that's going to be. 
but there's been times that the council has uh, decided to go down to what 25 35 percent at one time it was between 35 and 39 percent yeah so when they wanted this council wanted to make investments we reduce that fund balance so there's precedence for for that also Um, I mean, I have more, but if y'all want to ask some as well. Um, I know from our workshop meeting there was a question about the dock. Mm -hmm. um, I had a question about when the second phase would be complete and if we found out if the dock could support the dock. Um, Yes, the engineers looked at it. Um, what their recommendation was to do um, steel piles instead of the wood piles that we've been using, and so we would be able to swap those out. Um, there would be an additional cost for that, but um, not a significant, there's no redesign or anything that has to happen. So it would be just a cost of the upgraded material. Um, with that, where, where would the dock, or where would the boat be docked until that extension would be completed? Um, well, certainly um, there's more slips that are down there right now, so they could temporarily be at phase one. Um, or we could actually moor it out off the off the dock, or possibly look at a, a different location at a different marina or something. But we're we're looking at having the phase two done about the same time the the boat would be ready. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and have, has St. Mary's County been involved with possibly um, getting involved financially and uh, hosting the boat, or if it stayed here part of the time operating and moved to something like Point Lookout or St. Clements? Um, no, actually, I did reach out to the county commissioners, but because of uh, Eric Colvin being Nick's brother, they just didn't want to comment. They just wanted, you know, they didn't want to, you know, get involved until the council moved forward. So, one of my first questions is, for the public cruises, if we're going to do four a week, what's the minimum number of people that needs to be on that boat? For that boat to still go on I mean what if you know it's a Saturday morning it's not the best weather the boat can still go out what if five people get on that boat and that's it we're losing money off that cruise so does that boat go out or do we tell those people sorry you have to wait wait till tomorrow I mean uh, yes if it's especially if it's poor weather and you know we're gonna need to make sure there's probably 40 people on board to make it make it work I mean, there's a lot of detail. What we've tried to do is do uh, an estimation of what we think is very reasonable, um, and then the operational plan and how that, you know, how many people you'd have to have to make it profitable to go out, and you know, whether they're pre-ticket sales. I mean, that's all part of setting up the organization and putting the the business plan together. So a decision like that would be part of that. So unless somebody else wanted to ask a question? Or? Oh, I have one. Uh, okay, um, I don't want to take the, the parking, whole time up. I mean, the parking to me is one of the, one of the bigger issues. Um, I know we've talked about a shuttle or a trolley. Do we know a cost on what that's going to run us or how long that takes to set up? I mean, that's something that needs to be done in order for this to, to work. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, a number of the businesses have talked about participating with it also. But again, that's what we'd have to have set up for, you know, next next spring. Right. So we'll need to include that in our budget if we decide to move forward with it in our budget next year. Right. Um, hotel partnership. Have we asked the new owners about any type of partnership? I have reached out to them to see if they're going to have any type of shuttle. They haven't responded to me. Yeah. And I did have a question about the Charlie, so that that's answered. Um, well, uh, we said we've asked all the businesses. What about the businesses out in Leonardtown Center? Did we inquire from all of them? We went out on, with um, 190 mm -hmm. packets individually, the marketing committee did, for the Welcome Back campaign. And as the representatives went in, they tried to talk to business owners. And I would say at least 50 different people were contacted directly mm -hmm. through that process. And, um, and then as well as LBA members, um, you know, we had the meeting last week. There's been correspondence on the, on the LBA um, site, and they are members also. Most okay. Of them. Some of this stuff I'm just thinking out loud from comments. Um, 
Do we know what the depth of the water is <coughs> down there? We do. do. And we, ha we actually didn't just stick a stick in the water. We actually have a very extensive survey of the entire. Is that from when we did the um, docks and yes. stuff? Yep. Okay. Yes. And being a uh, boat operator, there's plenty of water for this. This boat just draws four feet of water. So. Are we ever able to obtain the past financials on this boat from the previous owner? We do not have the financials from him. Um, I actually have been in communication with the state who did the, um, the Business Works loan. Um, that was actually a loan from a Baltimore company that owned the boat prior to the Haver de Grace company. And um, my understanding from the state is that it was a very profitable business in Baltimore. Um, the gentleman was 86 and just couldn't handle the business side of it anymore. And that's when the loan transferred over to the new buyer. And then, um, I mean, it's, it's a very low interest loan. I don't know that there would have been a big incentive for him to pay it off, whether he could have or not. Um, but um, the state does have the financials and um, it has been a very profitable business in the past. Okay. Um, three. So have we, t I know we were talking about it with the pier extension, but have we talked about where the pump out station would go? Yeah, we have a design. We also have a separate grant for the pump out station as part of phase two. Okay. Is that going in the front on the end of the pier or is it? Um, well, the station itself is on land over um, near where the, the rock um, boat launches okay. at this time. So the station is there and then the equipment gets uh, run under the dock out to the uh, end of the pier. But basically, you just have the the, the hose the box, out there, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right? And it gets tied in with our sewer system. We are we have we would run another manhole over there, so it would actually be tied in with our sewer system. Okay. So I wanted to ask: when this committee was formed, was anybody put on the committee that was not in favor of the boat? Actually, the Ludwigs spoke yeah. out against it on Facebook and were invited to attend <clears throat> and. And um, I mean, we asked for volunteers. We were trying to look for people who had expertise that, you know, we had three captains that we reached out to. Um, so it was, a lot of it was based on expertise. I mean, I don't know if, uh, you could speak for yourself if that's not accurate. No, you're pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I had one last question, at least I do. Um, so the funds, so it's not in our budget currently, so we'd be pulling it from reserve. What, what funds the reserve fund? Is it money left over from the operating budget that gets moved down? How does, how does that get funded? In any given year, when the final numbers are audited and we we'll issue the financial statements, we can have revenue items that generate surplus, <coughs> We can also have expenditure items where we didn't spend 100% of what we budgeted, and that generates surplus, and that would ultimately fall to the bottom line. So generally speaking, our two main sources of income are property tax and income tax, and that funds a large portion of the budget. Our user pretty much stands alone because that's a state revenue and it can only be spent for certain you know, road maintenance type items. Um, so any expenditure savings in any given year can be more than any revenue surplus. It, it varies from year to year. But the two major sources of income are property tax and income tax. Thank you. And can we continue getting grants uh, or applying for grants for this boat, or was it a one time and no more? We can apply. I mean, there's not any guarantee. Certainly, we didn't rely on any grants for a specific dollar amount. Um, I mean, grant opportunities come up at different, you know, for different types of uses. Um, so, certainly, it's something that we'll be exploring, just like with the alleyway. Um, but there's not a guarantee, and we didn't use that as a revenue source. Okay, no, I was just more so more eligible to apply for grants. It wasn't you received one and you're shut off. Correct. Okay. No. okay. 
And I did confirm that there is no length of time we have to keep the boat. Um, there's no, nothing, there's no liens against the boat as far as the grant. Um, it's a one time and they think it's a, a good opportunity f to promote tourism and economic development and for the historical aspect as well. And there is no um, in anything that would keep us from selling the boat after we got the loan, I mean after we got the grant. So I know some other um, <coughs> people mentioned in the audience. I do, coming from public safety background, have a concern um, what could happen out there. If we put together a plan, how long would that be if we were to purchase this boat? I mean, what if we can't come together with a plan for enough you know, resources out there? I mean, it's 149 people. That could be a mass casualty event if something were to happen on that boat. I think certainly part of it would be working with emergency operations. Um, the the earliest that the boat would be out for use would be next spring like we went through March through October so the idea would be to work on the plan work on the boat get everything operational and, and set up to open for business in March at the end of March and I guess this would be the same for the security of it because I'm thinking you know when Who's going to monitor the boat when it's not in use? It's just going to be sitting there so anybody can just jump on it? No. there. I mean, there's protections um, already, gates and that sort okay. of thing. Yeah. We already have a camera system. We would probably be adding to that, which we already had budgeted for as well. And there's things on the boat as far as security as well. So I wanted to kind of jump back in on the ADA accessibility. Um, it was mentioned that there was an ADA ramp so people could get on. Yeah. What about someone who's in a wheelchair who wants to get up to that second deck? How do they get up there? Um, I don't think they get to the second deck, but they get to the first deck. Okay. Yeah. Well, and because my it, concern is it has a ramp that goes up. Okay. And my concern is that, you know, someone in in a wheelchair, for example, is going to want to say, "Well, I want to go up the second deck." Do we just tell them, "Sorry, you know, that's it"? I, you know, there's the potential that we might have to make improvements for that. What's that going to cost us? And you know, would that be year two, year three? I mean, we just don't know. There's that. That's a concern that I've thought about. That all it takes is one person to say, "I can't get up there," and that potentially sets the town up for liability. I just, I think that's potentially an issue. Um, I mean, it's it's ADA compliant. It's it's Coast Guard approved right now and ADA compliant now. So. <laughs> Of course, it's just me just thinking out loud, what if we can't find a group to run the boat? What do we do as the town? So now we have a boat, and there's no one operating the boat. Well, again, we do have Leonardtown Recreation, Inc. That was set up 20-some years ago, nonprofit. We could bring that up, hire, you know, put our own board of directors in charge, and have them operate it. It sounds like there is private, if we put an RFP out, there is private interest in running it, which would be what our options would be. Um, you know, we would have a, put the RFP out, see what kind of interest we have, and then make a decision of how it would be structured um, once we know what the options are. Yeah, one of the, one of the comments I heard today from a, a business was put out an RFI, you know, easy, quick, and that would help inform the decision, you know, do we go nonprofit, do we go sure. put out an RFP. Um, so, Mary and Larry, do you mind if I put you on the spot? Sure. So you are not sure about the boat, and then you're on the committee. How do you feel now? Well, I had a number of concerns, uh, and uh, when I saw the presentation, and started reading up on the information, asking questions. There are some questions that I have, and in fact, a number of few good ones came up today. But uh, right now, we're we're four. Okay. And I'll tell you why. And one of the reasons is, right now, if we go out to dinner, we're generally going outside the town. We did that for a long time. Now, if we want to go to dinner, we got some choices in town. So we tend to find restaurants in the town just as much as we eat outside. And as more restaurants come in, we see us being here more than out in other parts of the town. Mm -hmm. This, to me, adds another 
possibility for a couple of uh, elderly folks like us to find things to do. Right. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, uh, Antoinette's down the road here. We've been to that several times. Mm -hmm. We like that. We mm -hmm. like being able to do things like that for entertainment. We like going to the local restaurants mm -hmm. for entertainment. We like going down to the wharf when they have events down there. We see this as, wow, this is another thing that we can enjoy doing. So, yeah. Um, I will agree and disagree with my wonderful husband here. <laughs> yes, I am absolutely for the, the venue. I think it's a beautiful thing. I'd love to see it happen. But when I heard concerns from Jamie Weber, my husband runs a lot of time with the rescue squad. And they are so short on help. Today they were putting out an all points bulletin of some sort looking for help. I didn't see the safety factor involved in it. And it made me stop and think, because I know how shorthanded they are. If something happened, it, that could be a real problem. Mm -hmm. and, and I feel like, uh, you know, we got on this committee because we were interested and wanted to know more about it. But I almost feel like there's some missing pieces. I don't know if it's too soon to make a decision, financially or otherwise, but when I heard Mary Cox and, and the other gentleman talking about the safety, that is imperative. Right. Yeah, I'm picturing somebody has a heart attack out there in the middle of Breton Bay. <laughs> Somebody's got to get out to that person. and. Uh, I would now. I can say that the captain, the captain and the crew, they'll have CPR training. So they, they will be trained. They have to be trained. Yeah. So I can picture somebody has a heart attack out there. They have an AED out there. They have all the uh, equipment and the knowledge to do start CPR. Mm -hmm. And then here comes volunteer rescue squad or fire department out there to get the person. Uh, there's that's the best way it could be done. Right. And uh, so, you know, the person would be getting CPR, and when the rescue squad gets out there, we can continue that CPR. Normally, they don't do CPR until they realize the person's not breathing and has no pulse. That's when you start. So, uh, uh, you just want to, the training will be out there on the boat, I understand that. Right. It's just getting out there, it's rescue, getting out there and getting that person back if, he, if we can revive him. Mm -hmm. Nick, I did get an answer on the ADA. So if, if we have ADA uh, accessibility covered on the first deck, there would not be a requirement on the second deck to, okay. to improve it. And this decision has to be made at today's meeting. The deadline of the contract is tomorrow, correct? Uh, our, our deadline is tomorrow. We extended it to till, um, once already, and they do have uh, other people waiting, so they're not going to extend it again. Okay. I mean, I understand it's good for tourism. It's good to bring people into town. I totally, totally understand that. And, you know, I support all of our local businesses. I'm going to be honest. I, as of now, I'm not in favor of moving forward. Yeah, I'd kind of like to jump on Jay's point. You know, first of all, wonderful presentation. And, Doug, thank you. You did a great job. My concern is there's a saying, the devil's in the details. And, frankly, I feel like there's a lot of details that just have not been laid out. And for us to just sit here and say, okay, let's vote this in, you know, I, I've heard this, you know, the comment being made, we'll worry about that later, we can focus on that later. To me, that kind of baffles me just how we can say that it's, I think everything needs to be presented now, and we need to know exactly, I mean, one thing that really got me was safety and security. Are we talking, you know, I mean, I know, Lachelle, you mentioned, you know, the cameras and, but is that you know that's not going to stop someone from going on i mean even just putting like a rope at the end of the pier no I someone don't. can easily hop on right. and, and just with everything going on in the country too it, it concerns me you see so much destruction so much violence at some of these protests and these rallies all it takes is one person coming down there and say hey there's a boat let's go have fun down there and then we've got vandalism occurring it, it, you know there's an issue there and then my other big concern is you know when we if we buy this boat there's no doubt in my mind that it will be popular that first year because, you know, it's like when you give a child a new toy. 
what's that child going to do? That child's going to play with it. It's, it has all of their attention. All of their focus is going to be on that toy. But eventually, it gets old. It gets boring. They're going to put it away. And then something new comes along. And so I, my fear is that a lot of people, and I spoke <laughs> to some people who gave me the example, I would love to go on this boat. I would take a ride on it, you know, talking about the public cruises, but then I'm done. It's the same boat. It's the same route. Once you've seen it once, what's the incentive to keep going on it? You know, are people really going to pay $15 every single week consistently to say, I'm going to go in the same boat? Probably not. I don't see the revenue there. Now, with regards to the events, maybe weddings, wedding receptions, there's some potential there. I, I do think that <coughs> could be a huge asset for the town. And I said it at the first meeting, this is a neat concept. This is a neat idea. But with COVID, I'm going to go back to that. You know, there's talk about a vaccine. Well, let's be honest. Even if a vaccine came out tomorrow, not everybody's going to get it. It's going to take years for this to truly go away. And my fear is going into next year, it gets bad again. The governor comes out and says, okay, we're, li we're putting more restrictions on place. What does that do for the boat? What if he says there's no, you can't have certain activities outside and the boat qualifies under that? Now we're, we're in a mess. And so that, it's just concerns like that that I fear this is, it's a neat potential, it's a neat opportunity, but there's a lot of risk involved as there is with any endeavor that you go through. So just some of the concerns I feel have not been addressed. So I'm not, I'm not sure we really should proceed with this. So mine was, uh I was same same sort of concern. I was trying to run the numbers real quick. At that seventy thousand of the revenue for year two was uh, soon for events and uh, was it weddings, which could be accurate. But it's a it's seventy thousand of the ninety six thousand came from that. Uh, but then I went and looked because I know we talked about it last week. Is that the wharf right now? We pay ten thousand five hundred a month and just mortgage, just paying for the wharf. And I think that was that investment. So what was that? Twenty years? When did we buy the wharf? Ten years ago? Uh, Twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah, I think it's been fifteen years. Yeah. yeah. So we're still paying that ten thousand dollar investment. I mean, everyone here can attest. You go to the wharf on the weekend; it's crowded. So I kind of see that boat as this that we may not. Uh, I'm hoping the numbers are accurate and. Um, we do see it on the events and uh, 96,000 or 100K a year in revenue on the events. But I feel like it'll be the investment that the wharf was 15 years ago that we can attract people to it. I hope it, it holds that steady. I, I do have that same concern that people go on it once or twice for the first year or two and then stop. But I, I think that this will be something that'll be around that companies will use even if, uh, like Doug said, for Christmas parties. Um, and just major events and weddings. If we do have a wedding a week, that would be awesome because, as you mentioned, or as your number showed, that would pay or increase the revenue. Um, but I do think that this would be an investment in the businesses. Um, so I, I, I'm supportive of the idea at the moment. If I could just real quickly, since both of you talked about um, who would use it and everybody go on at one time, and that was it. The, just like the letter from the state tourism, it's all about marketing. Every company we talk to, you have to have the right people in place to do the marketing to bring in tourism from the outside. It's not just, it's about bringing more people to support our businesses. So I don't think it's just <coughs> people cl that are close by riding at one time. It's about how you market it and how, how you bring other people in to enjoy it. And, and that cruise that you're talking about is very low income anyway. I mean, you know, it's, it's well, and not, a, not a big part of the income. Yeah, and, and my fear too is just, are people really going to drive down from Howard County, from D.C., Baltimore to do a public cruise? Yeah. When you, you, you know, my concern is just that there, there's a lot of other boats up there. What's the incentive to come all the way down here? Now, you know, it would be a tremendous asset for the businesses. I have no doubt about that. But just keep in mind for some of the local businesses, if a group comes down and says we're going to book the boat out for a wedding or a wedding reception they don't have to use a town restaurant for the catering company they could say let's pick someone at solomon's so now they're coming in they have a business no we, we would so we, we if they're using the boat mm -hmm. we would uh have a number of or a list of caterers they could use uh, okay i wasn't i wasn't because actually that, in so. talking to like andrew and stuff you don't want just any caterer to come on without knowing that boat so you have to have caterers that are used to using that boat okay i wasn't aware yep. so yep that's good to know 
And, you know, we, I mean, th this is about getting de people down here for the weekend. They come down and do the cruise <coughs> one evening, spend the night, you know, then they'll go someplace else the next day. So it's not just driving down and driving right back. Mm -hmm. It's getting down here for the weekend. I, uh, I wanted to just thank everybody that was on the committee um, as well. I was on the committee as well. And really, I was expecting Doug to show up looking like the skipper from Delegate Island today. <laughs> and you're welcome, everybody that's got a little bit your way now to sing the Delegate Island uh, theme song. Um, and I probably need to apologize to some of the committee members because I was very negative when it, when it came to the numbers. I kept saying, I want an exit strategy. I want to know the numbers. I want the worst case. This, this sounds great. There's a lot of time in the sky, I think. Um, but I don't want to see the boat as a revenue to the town. If it makes money to the town, that's fantastic. What I don't want it to do is lose money. And I right. really feel like even with the numbers that we've seen, with the sponsorships that we've seen, um, and with the success of other nonprofits around here, and Sotterley does well in Cirque St. Louis City, uh, Pete Nimmelhaber was here earlier, and you know we were talking about St. Clements and, and the cross and how, how passionate people are about that down here. And I think that you'll see a lot of that kind of support for the boat once it comes in. And I think you'll see the schools. I mean, what a great opportunity for the schools. And if the private industry comes in here, I'm not so sure that we would have the right to say, you're a private boat, please let the schools come on and do school tours right. every day of the week. Right. That's only something that's going to be backed by a government or municipality. So um, thank you guys for being patient with me because I, I was definitely the one that kept saying, OK, exit strategy, exit strategy. Can we get out of this? If we buy this in a year from now, it sinks or whatever, are we going to be able to take care of it? Yes, the insurance looks like it will cover it. The boat will retain value. We can sell it a year from now. Okay. I guess I'm the last one, right? <laughs> um, so first I want to thank the committee. I think they did a great job. The presentation was wonderful. I know they put a lot of time. That was free time for us, so we, we appreciate that. And I also uh, want to thank all the people that came out to speak. You know, your opinions are more valuable to us than you know. So greatly appreciate everyone taking time out of their day and their evening with their kids to come down and, and tell us how you think. Um, so that being said, I think, you know, when you first get told, hey, if I have a boat down in town, that sounds great. Um, I want to get on the boat, take dinner, you know, right around town and come back. And, you know, we live near town, so we're downtown, so, you know, we could almost walk to the boat. Um, but we're not here to vote on whether or not we think it's a good idea. We're here to vote on whether or not we think it's good for the town, businesses, citizens. Is it going to be profitable? Um, does it make sense as part of our town plan, those kinds of things. Um, so that being said, and I have some issues, and some of them are the parking. We don't have that nailed down. We don't know how the shuttle or this trolley is going to work, and that's going to be another expense we'll have to take on. Um, so that worries me. Um, the other thing that worries me is that so we have some options on the business plan, but we don't know what that business plan looks like. There wasn't a marketing study done. There wasn't. Um, we didn't receive the financial statements from the current boat um, owner or, I mean, I know we spoke with the, um, the Harrisburg gentleman and I think they're doing all right. Um, but we don't have that information. Um, so I'm going to kind of piggyback on what Mary over here said and I just feel like we don't have enough information right now to make this a clear decision. I, I just don't have enough to say yes or no. Um, Unfortunately. Okay. I guess does anyone care to make a motion to see whether it passes or not? I'll make the motion. <clears throat> I move to approve the purchase of the Black Eyed Susan in the amount of three hundred and twenty two thousand per the purchase agreement dated July twenty fourth, twenty twenty. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Opposed. 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 Okay. Three, two, opposition. Opposed. So thank you very much. So we'll move on from here. Thank, thank everyone involved. And appreciate everyone's comments. We'll see where we go from here. Our, our meeting's not quite done yet, but y'all can certainly go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
report. I'm not going to get into anything else right now. Uh, events, Tyler. All right, uh, so the main one is the Wintertown Summer Music Festival, which is on Saturday, September 20th. Uh, it'll be featuring Roddy Booth, Hydro Effects, and then Wes and Carly Bryce. Um, and that's it for me. Okay. Um, I guess we are going to do a virtual Veterans Day. That hasn't been announced yet, but uh, instead of having the actual Veterans Day parade, we're going to do a virtual talking with Brandy today so. Um, so how often I mean we haven't ever skipped one in the past that week what's I'm sorry I know we the Veterans Day Parade um so that's been going on for forever it's yeah. so sad just yeah it is. yeah no I mean I understand completely just especially with that age group I you know just don't want them coming yeah, out here anyway, no, so. All right. okay uh Nick community development Planning. Uh, I don't have anything to report. Okay. Christy. Um, I don't have anything to report, but I do have a quick question for Lachelle. Um, the update or upgrade to the treatment plant, can you remind me what the schedule is? Are they, um, I know they're working on it. Yeah, uh, we've had several meetings. It's probably, um, you know, still about three years out probably okay. to completion. That's all I have. Okay. Jay, Southern Maryland Municipal Association. Mayor, thank you. The only thing I have is the virtual fall conference that's coming up. Um, I do not know when the deadline is for that. Terry, do you? October 3rd. October 3rd. Okay. So okay. I don't know if anyone else is interested, but I know. Well, I'm I called interested. everyone. Yeah. That's what I called about Saturday was see who's interested. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. So that's, that's the only thing I have. Thank you. But will you be attending? The, the fall conference? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you'll be at least we'll have one. So. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And Mary, business development and retention. All right, well, I need to be the bearer of bad news, but I closed another small business uh, over in Watertown this weekend. 15 years they've been here and gone. Can't, can't make it, can't survive COVID. So Who is that? Oh, I can't, oh. I can't say. Oh, but, yeah, okay. You know, so we're still, it's tough. It is yep. really tough sure. for the business, and I hope that Watertown can survive. On the flip side, um, went over to Antoinette's Wine Garden on uh, Saturday evening, which is a wonderful, wonderful experience. Yeah, I've heard of it and I'm, I'm so mm -hmm. happy to be there. Um, I spoke to the, the person that was serving the wine, I'm not sure who it was, the uh, leader, I guess, and I said, how's business been? And he said, you know, it's really picked up when they first started. He was watching mostly Netflix, and he said, now they're up to two people a night, really helps to keep things going. Yeah. And they're hoping to bring in some heaters to, so that people can continue to sit out. Um, I mean, my only concern really was sitting next to those orange bear barricades was, you know, it's like, oh gosh, somebody's out there driving drunk or end up in, you know, it's, it's a scary place to be. Yeah. So I hope that's something that maybe we can think about in the future or something, obviously not for this year, but, you know, if you can have the tables out on the, I think that we gave them permission to have tables out on the sidewalk. Yeah, they can have them on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just I, I two or three. I think that's really, you know, really safe, but I, I mean, I feel for these businesses, that's, yep. that's really hard, it's hard yep. to have an elegant experience, um, but fantastic. So please, if anybody has not gone to Internet, please give it a shot. The drinks were wonderful, the, the food was good, it was really a great event every night. Um, Want to talk about this brochure that's come out? Fantastic. Yep. Fantastic. I was just asking the show beforehand if we could actually mail these to everybody. It would be great to have. What a nice um, piece of, you know, that you can have on your desk or whatever. And it's all organized, you know, where it's arts and professional people. And we're really supporting one of businesses, so I love this. And then I don't know if anybody uh, watches, I guess it was on YouTube, if anybody saw Haunted Southern Maryland over the weekend. Yeah, I did. I saw it. And they did the, um, the Mall Dyer. And please, 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 can we get a better sign for the Mall Dyer Rock? <laughs> I hate that little postcard. That, I think it's county probably. counties. Counties, uh, uh, they're, they're working with the committee. Yeah. They're working with the committee. 
I mean, yeah. we need to figure out how to boost up that committee. Because uh, I mean, it was yeah. it was neat to have you know see the courthouse feature and see him walking through downtown Watertown, and um, I, it just Maldire for whatever reason brings people into yeah. Watertown. It does. So it'd be nice to have a little bit more to give. Yeah. So if there's anything I can do to help out on that, and I'd love to love to see. <clears throat> and I think the tourism uh, changed the sign out there. Also, yeah, didn't they? Have they have a new sign ready in here. Well, I guess so. Well, but yeah, they put it up. Yep. Yeah. The old jail has a new sign. Yeah, the old jail. The, the rock is meant to move over to Tudor Hall, and I think that the county uh, DPW is working with um, Tudor Hall to get that rock. Oh, over to the, okay. Yeah. It, it would be great to just have something more, because I felt since I were, you were featured, I, and I don't know, I guess people will watch it, but you know, we got this little, looks like an index card that somebody just wrote from all that rock, so <laughs> i like to see something a little bit more. And that's it. Okay. All right, unless there's anything else, I uh, call for a adjournment. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Can I buy the vote and edit the uh, grant money? Is that an option? No.